Hello and good afternoon. We are coming to you live from the Oman Cricket Academy. It's day three, time for match number 10 from Turf 2. This is the ACC Men's Premier Cup 2024. And let me tell you, this tournament is certainly hotting up with teams just about bringing their A games. It's time for Saudi Arabia to take on Hong Kong, China in match number 10. Saudi dropped their first game yesterday against Malaysia. They had a good chance of making it in Hong Kong. Uh, China are in red-hot form. We are seeing so many things happen. Six sixes in an over yesterday by a Nepal player, Dipendra Singh Airi, and today a hat-trick as well earlier by Akib Ilyas. So much more that beckons in this tournament. Just the right time to go down to the centre. Mudassar Ali Qureshi with both the captains for the toss. Toss time, game number 10. Hong Kong, China are taking on the Saudi Arabia. Men who matters the most, Nizakat leading the side of Hong Kong, China, and Hisham, the captain of Saudi Arabia. And most importantly, looking sharp is Hamim Talwar, our match referee. Nizakat will flip the coin and Hisham will call. What have you decided? Uh, we'll have a bat first. I think it's a dry, good patch. Uh, and we've seen yesterday as well. It gets easier to bat early on than uh, second innings. So I think uh, our bowling has done a good job yesterday as well. Could have restricted them 10-15 runs more. So with the wicket helping it a bit, I think it was, it's a better chance. In the second innings. And Hisham, overnight rain, so does it impact your plan and tell us about your combination? Uh, not, not really. I think we just had one change uh, with the one batsman. Saad comes in. Uh, and the rest of the things remain the same. I think it's just a bad day at the office yesterday. Hmm. What is the total you want to post? Uh, I think we'll look for something uh, over 170, 180. So that would be something to challenge uh, a quality side like Hong Kong. All the best, do well. All right, thank you, sir. Your thoughts on bowling first? Yeah, actually, we also wanted to bat first, but look, this wicket, uh, is, I don't think it's going to any deteriorate uh, because this is a very good wicket. We have played uh, here a few times ago as well. So we know that, you know, the outfield is pretty quick, so we don't mind chasing as well. And is that talking about the surface, what is the good total do you think you can chase on this track? Well, you know, anything uh, below 160, uh, ideally we're going to uh, make sure that we're going to bowl well. But anything, you know, wh whatever total we have, we have to make sure that we have to play positive cricket and we have lots of depth in our batting. So, yeah, we are, we are fine with that. And what have we done with the side? Are there any changes? Uh, yeah, we have one changes. Martin Kutsia is injured, so he's out and Rona Kapoor is in. All the best and enjoy the occasion. Thank you. The news from the centre is that Saudi Arabia captain Hisham has won the toss and he has opted to bat first. Right, the weather has been a little dodgy this morning. Overnight rains, incessant morning rains as well, has just about uh, created some kind of a rain curtailed first game. And that fixture was played between Oman and Cambodia where the match was just about curtailed to 11 over the side. However, even now it just shows a few dark patches but... We have a full game lined up for sure. What's well, lined up in this game as well? Saudi Arabia winning the toss, deciding to bat first. The expected score told by Captain Hisham Sheikh is something around 170, 180. We've seen a lot happen in the last 24 hours. Just yesterday evening, Nepal's Deependra Singh Airi hit six sixes in an over, and earlier in the day, Oman's Ake Bilyas got a hat trick as well. Abdul Wahid. The age-old opener of Saudi Arabia. He's the run machine for them. And he'll be joined by Saad. Saad Khan. Saudi dropped their game yesterday against Malaysia. They had a good chance of getting those first two points. But just about lost their way in the end. Ayush Ashish Shukla will open proceedings with the ball for Hong Kong. They've looked good. Powerful performance with the bat against Qatar in their first game. This is a Group A fixture. A win for Hong Kong over here will certainly add to their strength. Just the right time to introduce and welcome my co-commentator as well, Andrew Leonard. Andrew, good afternoon. Yeah, very good afternoon. All set, game number 10. Here we go. And immediately we see some movement, slip in place, watchfully defended as well. Historic day today for Saudi Arabia as well. First meeting between these two sides in, in T20i cricket, and an official recognised game. I think they'll feel as though they let one get away yesterday. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia were, well, they were well in the hunt in the chase, weren't they? In fact, the halfway stage, 
It really should have hunted those runs down. First runs on the board for Saudi Arabia. A little wayward, wide outside off. On-field empires for this game, Abdul Jabbar. He's officiating this game between Hong Kong and Saudi Arabia. And alongside him at square leg is Tariq Rashid. Two on-field empires for this game, Abdul Jabbar and Tariq Rashid. We have the TV empire, Mohammad Murshid Ali Khan, fourth empire, Shiju Sam, and the match referee for this game, Hamimullah Hamid. Yet again, another day, Andrew, overcast conditions, and today we did see the ball move as well. If you look at the forecast, it doesn't look great, but I don't think we're going to have any more rain today. I might be putting my foot in my mouth like the big Irish rain curse that we tend to be. We bring the rain everywhere. We had a Ireland versus Afghanistan game in the desert washed out last month. Nicely bowled. I'm not too sure whether that was done intently to open the face of the bat, but a few experts, Andrew, out here at the ground are saying there could be some rain later in the day. I don't think so. I think that those clouds are far enough away. Hopefully we'll get a result in anyway. And remember, it can be as little as a five overs per side clash in terms of the chase anyway. If Saudi Arabia should get to bat more than that. If you look at the scores, though, at this second oval, they've been really, really high. That's why I think Saudi Arabia will be so disappointed at their effort yesterday. And that's a good point you've made. In fact, early in the day, the 11 over match as well, the rain curtail game, Oman got to something close to 160, and uh, Cambodia as well. Oman 154 for six, Cambodia got to 91. So we're talking of almost 250 runs in 22 overs. Yeah, generally, the sort of average runs per over here have been in and around 10, and that's why, having done such a good job with the ball, in fact, the tail needed to wag for Malaysia to get up to that 146 yesterday. Goes Ariel over the bowler's head. That's a wonderful shot. It's a heavy outfield, but it'll still trickle away for a four. First boundary here for Wahid, and the first boundary for Saudi as well. That will be the only difference today, although it wasn't a problem for Oman. They hit so many maximums in the morning game, the curtail game. Outfield slow. Take a look at it here. Very heavy compared to what you usually see here. No expert, but there must have been, what, three or four inches of rain at least that fell overnight in this morning. A few thunderstorms. In fact, looking at the windows of the hotel, I know it's the other side of the mountains this morning. You felt, God, we might get, not get any cricket in today, but we've been straight into action for the afternoon game, we should hopefully get a full match in and a great effort to get a result this morning too. Bounce and carry, very nice to see that. Good comeback here by Shukla. Five of the first over. Dhananjay Chetan Rao, left arm seamer. We'll bowl the second over with some movement. I'm sure he'll want to ask a few questions very early in this innings. You want to keep it accurate to begin with, not offer much width, and that's a good start for him as well. As of now, we have uh, a full match guaranteed. We only hope that the weather gods just about be kind and we get to see a full game. Andrew, lots happening here in the ACC Men's T20 Premier Cup. Deependra Singh Airi last evening. Oh, my God. Yeah, very special, wasn't it? Really was. 
I've seen the best part of 10,000 international matches across multiple games. And Dependra Singh Oiri, well, he's added his name to a very exclusive list. And lovely to see uh, Jasker Malhotra post overnight from America. Now Herschel Gibbs this morning from South Africa there. Congratulations to the exclusive club's newest member. Just five men have done it. Chatting to Dependra last night, he couldn't name the other four that were <laughs> members of the club. He managed to get two of the four, not a bad effort. Ah, in no position whatsoever that came in this time around. Saad Khan a little clueless still to get off the mark. I mean, great to see a left arm seamer in action for Hong Kong. He's come through their youth development system, just 22 years of age. Nice to see Hong Kong promoting youth. Just made his T20I debut earlier in the year. That was against China. In a home series, Japan he's played against as well, Qatar too. He's got that, it's got the toe end of the bat, so that will not have the pace to pierce the fielder. In fact, it lands straight to the fielder at point. Yeah, first time seeing him live with my own eyes, there's definitely some potential there, isn't there, for the left arm seamer. He's maybe not the quickest, but you just you have that angle, you see a little bit of movement as well. Looks like a nice strong action, hopefully he can get stronger and quicker and faster. This time he chips it over. That was short and wide. A couple of bounces for a boundary. Saad tees off in style. Yeah, a bit too much width, wasn't there? There, Mikhail. And certainly that's a, a nice freebie to really get your account underway. Starts with a boundary. Cannot afford width in the first six because there's only two outside the circle. And that's far too easy. For Saudi Arabia, when you look at their batting, their bowling and fielding always impresses me when I watch them, but you look at their batting, they're very heavily reliant upon Faisal Khan and Abdul Wahid. Big disparity between them and the rest. So somebody like Asad Khan, he needs to come to the party, he needs to start making more regular contributions. Just 150 in 14 innings thus far in T20I cricket. You'll get good performances from Wahid and Faisal Khan, I've no doubt. Others need to step up. Again, that was a little short, but this time it did have a little bit of carry as well, hitting the bat maker's name. But just coming back to Dhananjay's action, at the point of delivery, you don't see that jump. Usually you see with most pacers, Andrew. It's just a little bit of a stride into it. Yeah, I know this sounds strange, but fast bowlers have to be good runners. You think of all the great quick bowlers. Vast majority of them really attack the crease, whether in their own styles, Brett Lee, Glenn McGrath, even Bumrah does in his own way. This is going to be edged away. It's going to be four runs to close out the second. A little bit of fortune this time for Sad Khan. It's 14 for none. It's not just been the batters who've been starring, though, Mikhail, has it? We'll get one more look at this boundary. The bowlers, too. We missed it this morning. I think we're actually in the car on the way up to the ground. A hat-trick for Aki Ilias. Are our team going to be able to magic it and show it? I haven't seen it yet. Was it a good one? I haven't seen it either. Wouldn't be a bad idea, actually, Andrew, to have a look at those three deliveries by Ake Bilyas that gave him the much-needed hat-trick as well. That was quite a moment. We are seeing a lot of things happen. Here it is. This is the first one. Soft dismissal. Nicely taken in the deep wicket number one. That was Vimukti, Viraj. And the googly, the wrong one. He's so, so wily as a spinner. And then a little chop on Ake Bilyas. Pumped up, oh, and a kiss of the turf, Shander Paul-esque. Back live, and that's a boundary wide. Elegant, a punch of the back foot, beautifully done, and that's what he brings to the middle. A lot of class in his carnage. And with the potential of a, a rain of bridge chase, in theory, if that rain does come about, you just wonder how important this first innings is going to be. Obviously, runs on the board are always healthy. The scores at this ground have been outstanding, absolutely outstanding. We've seen UAE post their highest ever. Here again, sliced down to third for a single, just like the way Wahid is shaping up. Yeah, Hong Kong will have to be wary of this onslaught. Usually, Faisal Khan is the designated opener with Saudi Arabia this time around. They've just made a little bit of a shuffle in the top order. 
Saad, the left-handed batter, just bringing in a left-right combination. Faisal also is equally dangerous in the first six. This partnership is 19. It's come in quick time, helped by some ordinary bowling. Oh, that came in sharply. But I feel it's just doing too much. And that's what Abdul Jabbar also feels. Oh, I tell you, this is close. This is very, very close, Mikhail. You can understand why Shukla wanted the decision. You can also understand why it's not been given out because it's done so much. Look at the way it's hooped back in. But I think if that's hit in line, oh, I think that's going to crash into leg stump. Shukla was absolutely convinced, wasn't he? Really good delivery. And it looks like Abdul Jabba, the Empire as well, was very sure about his decision. Despite the appeal, the plea, it was a no. Chipped in the air. Oh, and he's just about managed to stop that great work by Dhananjay. Just come off his bowling. He's done well. Well, I reckon Ayush Shukla heard you from the commentary box. He said, you, you said the bowling was ordinary. Look at that. Oh, that's a beauty. That's out for me. That's hit him in line with off stump. It's going to go on and crash into leg. Really good shout. But the umpire felt it was doing too much. Also, maybe because the bowler just went slightly wide off the crease, Andrew, or he was straighter. Right. Okay, from ordinary to extraordinary. <laughs> it's just a matter of a delivery. Once again, he's got that to tail in. Beautiful bowling. He's getting significant movement, and that will have been a big factor for the umpire. I think generally uh, most cricketers, whether you're batters or bowlers, obviously the bowler at the time wants it to be given out. They'd rather the umpires in general are on the side of caution. They'd rather they be absolutely convinced when they give one. So I think maybe just enough doubt to give it not out. But oh, it was very close. The bowler in me was up appealing. I'll tell you, Hong Kong, they'll have wanted that wicket. Not to be yet. There again, nicely, firmly driven. A very good over here by Ayush after being hit for a four at the very first ball. Seven coming off it. Three gone. It's 21 for no loss. Mikhail, let's have a little bit of a look as to the context of this group and the importance of today's game. I don't want to say must win yet because there is always incredible permutations. But you do feel if Saudi Arabia were to lose today, all of a sudden there's a gulf, isn't there? The top two are looking quite likely to be Nepal and Hong Kong. Although Malaysia will have a chance to get past Hong Kong. Qatar, with their net run rate, probably out of the equation. Andrew, what happens if Saudi wins this equation? Three teams with two matches with one wins just makes it a three-way battle? Yeah, it'd be cracking, wouldn't it? That's the other group. That's Group B. And again, there is a bit of a gulf opened up. Now, Kuwait, I think they still have to play Oman, don't they? So that will be a critical game. Let me just double-check that. Yeah, Kuwait-Oman will be the final group game, in fact, in that group. So if Kuwait could beat Bahrain, that'll be tomorrow. They could set it up that it would be a win-and-go-through situation if the UAE, who are the form team of the group, won out and won all four games. There's in two minds to go over. Just about checking a shot in the end and getting one down to long gone. Oh, yes. Group A makes for an interesting pool, but Group B quite certainly will be the one to watch out for. Much like the group death that we keep talking about, group of death. I do feel a bit for Qatar's head coach, Mohamed Haroun, as well. He's been, well, a little bit of a victim of a bit of mocking from the Nepal fans because he said, if we win the first match, we're going to beat all four teams, including Nepal. We're going to top the group. Now they're none from two. You always want to back your players. But he's just been made to look a little silly, hasn't he, with that statement. Big mix up. It's not going to be a run out. Unbelievable. They could have run anyone out here. They could have walked the ball to the non-striker's end and got home. Instead, he shied at the stumps. The backing up only got half a stop. Should have been the first wicket. Somehow, they survive. What a miss. What an opportunity gone a-begging. Look at this. Both the batters stranded at one end. That fielding effort, absolutely brilliant by Kapoor. He did go for the aim, but went for the throw then. But look at the backing up there. Had that been taken clean, it would have been curtains to Saad Khan. But they live to tell a story another day. Where were the Saudi Arabia batters? You couldn't see them. 
They were nowhere to be seen, were they? The reason why, they were down at the same end, shaking hands with each other. I think they've ended up with a single. Remarkable. And to make matters worse, Abdul Waid hits the next ball for a four. So everything going Saudi Arabia's way. They survive, they score, and they continue to move on. Well, I'll tell you something. These are big moments in the match early in the game. Could have been an LBW, should have been a run out. But instead, the two Saudi Arabian openers are still there. I definitely think they're a cricketing nation on the rise. You look at the, the work that they've done in recent times. One to watch. Nicely worked away again. A couple of runs here. Abdul Wahid in two minds settles for one. They don't want another run out. They don't want another mix up. No confusion anymore. But Saudi have to win this game just to keep their hopes alive in this competition. The reason I say they're, they're a side to watch, you look at what the Saudi Cricket Association are doing. The appointment they've made, the head coach, Kabir Khan, don't think you could have found a better fit. The job he did with Afghanistan, well, it's legendary, isn't it? Brought them all the way from World Cricket League Division 5. Oh, that's wrapped on the pads once again. A loud appeal and the finger goes up. Dhananjay strikes. Saad Khan has to depart. And Hong Kong, after having a few anxious moments in the field, finally get their first wicket. Well, the finger was up in a flash here, wasn't it? It is absolutely plumb. If we had the Hawkeye in play, it would have pitched outside off, hit in line, impact in line, cannon in into middle and leg. Yeah, that's as out as they come. Look at how quickly that finger went up. Sad can you. He knew he was in all sorts of trouble. He's gone for nine. And Saudi Arabia lose their first 28 for one. Faisal Khan makes his way to the middle at the fall of Saad Khan's wicket. I've watched him bat a couple of times. Usually the designated opener alongside Abdul Wahid, but this time he's taken up a new role at number three, but he enjoys the power play. He loves to improvise, but he'll be up against a bowler who's riding high on a sea of confidence right now. Watchful. Good over here for Hong Kong and Dhananjay. A wicket and seven coming off it. Four gone is 28 for one. Get one more look at this wicket here for Dan and Jay. Definite little nip backer, wasn't it? It's actually probably hit the seam. I think that's moved off the seam. Finger went up immediately and Dan and Jay's delighted. Brings together two leading run scorers for Saudi Arabia. This partnership going to be so, so important, not just for today's game, but for Saudi Arabia's campaign on the whole. What also helped uh, the Empire, Tariq Rashid, in that dismissal was the fact that Saad Khan just closed the face of this bat and tried to play across the line. More often than not, to a delivery that holds its line, it just makes things very easy for the Empire as well. Change in bowling. Spin introduced. Yasin Murtaza, left arm orthodox. Takes his time, goes off the back foot and punches it as well. Abdul Wahid is looking so elegant this afternoon. Yeah, it's been introduced earlier. Uh, a little perplexed by that decision, given how much the ball is moving around through the air and off the surface. Now, Yassim Murtaz is a beautiful bowler. He's brilliant to watch. He's a real technician with his left arm spin. He gets lovely curve and lovely dip. And he turns the ball too, but surely... With these conditions, you want your seamers to get good use of that new ball. Good point, Andrew. 
just look at the overcast conditions as well. You saw the ball move. Ideally, you want to persist with your paces. Quicker this time with the arm. Best bet for Saudi, Abdul Wahid Faisal Khan, to get the bulk of the runs? Yeah, they, they really are the, the two standouts. There's a big disparity, and I mean that with due respect to the other Saudi batters. If you just look at the, the performances over the years, I'd probably pick up a couple of leg buys here, I suspect. Should have just got home. Direct hit might have been interesting. A couple of leg buys given, but their records are very much in almost direct opposition to the rest of their batting colleagues. These two score the vast weight of the runs. They've got 971 and 862 respectively in this format coming in. No one else has got more than 400. So it's a big, big gulf, these two key. Gives the charge and goes the distance as well. That's a huge hit and I'll tell you what, it may have gone into the puddle as well. But what a shot. There's actually a little river just over that fence, a stream that I walked up by last night. And this, oh, it's as good as you want to see, right out of the screws. Gone many a mile. Why, oh, why would you be bowling left arm spin in these heavy overcast skies with the ball hooping around? I thought he caused all sorts of problems, Shukla. But he was whipped out of the attack, and where he goes downtown for six. And now this will also mean that the ball will need a little bit of maintenance work to be done because it's just about dropped into water and it'll have to be wiped and ensure that the shiny ball has its same kind of gloss on it. Yeah, the umpire there is, is actually seeing whether or not he can get it back to a playable condition because I think it either, we didn't see exactly where it landed, it either went into one of the big puddles that was created by the rain, or possibly even that river, and Isan Khan is saying, hold on, come on, surely we get a new ball here. Shukla, well, his body language paints the picture, doesn't it? He's wondering why he wasn't bowling a third over, and he knows that all the movement is going to be gone in a flash. Now, particularly after the ball falling into the puddle, it'll suddenly get a little bit more heavier, Andrew. The swing factor would just be negated. Maybe, though, we'll have to wait and watch. Not too sure. Bowling spin in over number five is the best option in these conditions and situation. But Abdul Wahid, what an innings he's playing once again. 26 and 17, holding fort. Saudi, in the meanwhile, have raced to 40. Stamp down the leg side, get some glove on it. Very lucky to get away with it. So an eventful one, a good one for Saudi Arabia. 12 coming off it, 5 gone, it's 40 for 1. A change each for both the teams, Hong Kong, China. Well, they have Ashish uh, Ayush Shukla coming in for this game. The pace bowler opened the proceedings. And for Saudi Arabia, Saad Khan was given an opportunity to play in this game. Atikul Rahman missing out for Hong Kong, China. That's picked away, but there's protection in the deep and he'll keep it to one. But Saudi has come out with some intent in this game. I'm sure they'll be a little hurt after what happened yesterday against Malaysia. For most part of the game, they were in the chase. A middle order. Wobble. Hampered. That chase for them. And they'll be eager to make amends and redeem themselves in this game. Picked away. That's a wonderful shot. Abdul Wahid is dishing out some fine hits in the middle. 
almost compounding their errors here, Hong Kong, aren't they? They don't keep the bowler on that they should have, and they do keep going then. They kind of recognise their mistake. They go going with the wicket taker at the other end. He doesn't quite at the same pace, and he just gets hammered away. Look at that completely the wrong line. Lengths have been pretty good, but often the line has been wrong, and it's been punished. It's a good start for Saudi Arabia. Game on here in Muscat. This time he plays it through mid-wicket, flick off the pads. He is looking unstoppable right now and playing so good on all sides of the wicket. Abdul Wahid has raced to 34. I'll tell you something, if Abdul Wahid and Faisal Khan could get some support with the bat, this Saudi team could be flying up the rankings in the years to come. They're a very good bowling side. I love what the head coach coming in has done. The very first thing he did, Kabir Khan, because there's a lot of cricket in Saudi Arabia. It's not just one city, it's all across the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. He found the 30 best cricketers, in his opinion, across the country, and he said, right, guys, we all buy into the same thing. We all get super fit, and we have to field well. Didn't quite get into position, but he's got enough bat on that, and looks like it's going to be the third consecutive four of this over. And that's what happens when you strain line. Dhananjay has been taken to the cleaners. 50 comes up inside the power play. Really good batting this. Again, it's an over too many, isn't it, for the left arm seamer? Just got his option wrong, says Nizakat Khan, Hong Kong skipper. But you look at the modern associate game that the flag bearers, the Netherlands, the Scotlands, the Nepals, the Namibias, these sides, they buy in to a process. They're super fit, they feel brilliantly well. I think that's what Saudi Arabia, that's the template they're trying to follow. It's exactly what Kabir Khan did with Afghanistan. And I think there really is something brewing there. It's a hotbed of cricket, this region, and the Gulf. Here's the three boundaries. Consecutive line consistently wrong from the left armour. And at that pace, he's never going to trouble the batters as well. Enough time for Abdul Wahid to just about give the swivel and play his shots. What an over this has turned out to be for Saudi there again, drifting down leg. Lucky enough to have a field in the deep and this will be one. Saudi Arabia winning the toss early in the day. Decided to bat first in overcast conditions. Rain curtailed first game of the day. But this one seems to be a full and a good game as we only hope that the sun just about emerges from the dark clouds. 55 for 1 in 5.5. Faisal Khan in all of it has been a spectator. Watching his partner call the shots. Oh, this one's down leg as well. Make that boundary number four of this over. Easy pickings. I have to say it's a poor over. It really is. Bold nicely in his first two. He's just got his lines all wrong here to a batter of high quality. Every single time, I think five of the six balls have pitched outside leg. So they turn into free hits. It gets us to the end of the power play. I think it belongs to Saudi Arabia. It's 59 for one. We'll make it simple for our viewers. We think and we are sure it's gone Saudi Arabia's way. 59 for 1. It's been absolute domination with the bat. Hong Kong, China certainly have to pull things back. Yeah, spot on the money, Mikhail. Just have a little shuffle in here. Well, a bit of fun farewell to the moment for Mikhail Vaswami. Let's do it after. Interestingly, Mertatz is going to continue as I welcome Mudasser, my co-commentator. Mudasser, firstly, great to see you back fully healthy. I'm sure you enjoyed the action from home yesterday. I was following that game where you were commenting during that Dependar Airy six success. A good partnership between Wahid and Faisal Khan. But look at that visible progress if you talk about associate nations. They're matching the feet of big boys. The likes of Aki Bilyas getting a hat-trick. Dependar Singh Airy getting... Six sixes, and if we talk about the UAE captain Mohammad Wasim, he's in top six players in T20 list of batters. So credit should be given to the boards of associate nations. I just think this whole region is a real hotbed at the moment, and one of the main reasons we're seeing development and success. Another mix-up between the wickets is, is the amount of cricket they're playing. 
obviously facilities are, are very important. And that's where some, something like here in Oman, you've got brilliant facilities there in the UAE, world class across, well, what, five or six of the Emirates now. This was the mix up, the fumble. Could have easily been another run out, couldn't it? That's going to miss leg, just angling down, skids on, no turn. But there's facilities coming up all around the region, which is so heartening to see. And that is the reason we have seen the teams like Nepal, Oman, and UAE especially dominating in associate nations. So is Hong Kong, China, and lately Saudi Arabia, they are also doing good. So is Kuwait. It's just a matter of time. Get that experience. A quicker delivery. He has been key if we talk about the left arm orthodoxy Yasin Murtada for Hong Kong, especially in the middle overs. Yeah, yeah, take him at the end of the set. Yeah, I love watching him bowl. Not a bad batter either, is he? He's been used in all sorts of positions up the top, in the middle, down the end. He can have a swing. Amazing story, actually. I think he'd given up on cricket entirely before he emigrated to Hong Kong and as so many players do sometimes coming from, he played a lot of first class cricket back in Pakistan. Really enjoying his second life as a cricketer, but this time he's been carved away and it's an excellent stop from Aizaz Khan. Two run save for me. Get us to the end of the seventh, 64 for one. We just have a quick boundary check here. Mudasser look clean to me. I think it's a good job done by the fielder, Azaz Khan, putting that extra effort, saving some runs for his team. Even the likes of Yasim Murtuza is leaking runs. A calculative risk has been taken by these two batters against the left arm orthodox. We're winning the toss, Hisham straight away opting to bat first and responding to the call of the captain are the batters of Saudi Arabia, 64 for the loss of one. And here's the best of the power play, Mudasser. We're going to see plenty of good strokes, particularly from the talisman for Saudi Arabia. He's so elegant to watch, isn't he? And that wasn't a great over. Lots down the leg side. That was the first wicket to fall. In fact, the poor over is coming up now in a moment. There's a few boundaries off Mertatsa too, down the ground. That was probably the shot of the day. A proper cricketing shot playing on the merit of the ball, especially Wahid. He has been in exceptional form with the bat for Saudi Arabia. He's making sure to get those quick runs for his team. So overcast conditions here in Oman Cricket Academy. Great shot. It's Ehsan Khan, another experience of break bowler. A loyal servant if we talk about Ehsan Khan. I will be crying tears when Ehsan Khan finally gives it up. I don't know what age he is. I'm not sure he's 100% either, but he certainly isn't the right side of 40. But he's as good as ever. Look at his consistency. Four for 31 the other day against Qatar. He's got a very simple game plan. He's highly effective. And his passion, his enthusiasm for the game, well, it's inspiring. Do you really think that age does matter? <laughs> no. If you're fit, why can't you play? And he's fit enough. He's delivering the goods for his team, Ehsan Khan. Always among the wickets. Oh, was this a chance? I think this has gone down. Not the easiest for the keeper by any stretch, Zishan Ali. But I think he's got maybe a bit of his webbing or a decent part of the glove on it. And down it goes. An opportunity created. but Not getting that support. A quicker delivery. Trying out too many things is Faisal Khan. He needs to make sure to rotate the strike. Let Abdul Wahid face as much as many deliveries possible. Well, I put my foot in my mouth again. He's the right side of Ford. He's 39. I thought he was 40 or 41. Now, great enthusiasm from the veteran. As this one is fumbled the cover. Probably should have been stopped. It'll only cost a single. Still very effective. He's a difficult bowler to get away. Sometimes even used at the death as well. And two things I think that we cannot predict is the age of these players, the way they are fit, and the mood of my wife. It's really tough to predict. Well, that's been helped around the corner. 
going to be a single. I'll ask you more about that off air. Mudasser, we'll stick with the cricket for the moment. Eight of Vimbold, 69 for one. So it's actually two changes. Just wanted to clarify that for Hong Kong. Out go Martin Kutsia and Atikul Iqbal. And then in come Ayu Shukla. Thought ball really nicely up the top alongside Rana Kapoor into the starting 11. And for Saudi Arabia, seeing that one change. Sad Khan in. And it went Kashif Abbas, I believe it was, who played in that first game. Saudi Arabia would have been really disappointed not to get over the line. Very high scores on the wickets in both grounds, particularly at the, the second oval here. Especially that match against uh, Malaysia. It's a heartbreak for Saudi Arabia. Last five wickets going down in just a matter of 12 runs. So Yasin Murtaza will continue to bowl his third over. This time slow in the air, nicely negotiated on the back foot. And good to see Abdul Wahid showing some respect to the senior left arm orthodox Yasin Murtaza not in a hurry to take on Murtaza, he knows the value of his stay. Slog swept, man out there over his head. Didn't feel like he got the full piece of it at first, but Murtaza got it up above his eye line. Can took the bait and hammered him out of the ground. Uh, this boy has some other plans against a young Murtaza's a flighted delivery going down on one knee. A brave looking shot taking on Yasin Murtaza Faisal Khan. It's a positive approach has been adapted by the batters of Saudi Arabia. Faisal Khan moves to 16 with that maximum. Saudi Arabia looking good, 76. Though they have lost to Saad early in the innings. A good partnership flourishing between these two. Well, I had a hilarious message. I get all sorts of messages, as I know you do, Mudasser, on, on social media as the sun just comes across the ground. I had a hilarious message from one fan in Nepal, worried yesterday. He said, what about the players on the other field when Dependra Singhari is hitting these big sixes? Big swing and a miss this time. Do they not need helmets in the outfield? It's a proud moment as a Nepal fan or even if you're a cricket supporter. Someone like Dipenda Singh Airi from Nepal creating a history here in ACC Men's Premier Cup. The plan is clear from Faisal Khan. He's trying to attack Yasin Murtaza. He has been a bit expensive. Wicketless 23 in his 2.4 overs. It's always good to see him. Where when Nepal is playing, they do get that support from the crowd. Plenty of people coming in and supporting the boys. And I think somehow it motivates them to perform really well. Yeah, look, they're not out the 12th player for them. I'll give them an advantage. You'd like to think Oman will get good turnouts if they can get into the knockout stages for the, the semi-finals and the final. Maybe a few UAE fans will come across. This one's hit inside out over extra. Might have a boundary check here. It's going to be given as four. Very close to being all the way for six. Just wonder, are we going to have that checked? Either way, it's a flying end to the ninth over. 81 for one. A bit fuller and not afraid to go aerial. And one bounce, four runs. Abdul Jabbar has a very good eyesight. So ends though with the boundary, 9 was done. Saudi Arabia looking good in a strong position, 81 for the loss of one. You're not certain that Nizakat Khan will look at the first nine overs and feel as though he's got his bowling options right. And with the sunshine now coming out, maybe the pitch will flatten out a touch. And who knows? Saudi Arabia, well, they could be thinking of something, what, 170, 180, maybe even a few more? If one of them can stay till 17th or 18th over, they can go beyond that 170, 180. Inching closer to his personal milestone, Abdul Wahid, one and away from his personal 50. 
And that is going to be 50. And he gets there with a lovely shot behind square on the offside. It's come in really good time too. 33 balls, you take that, whatever the conditions, particularly with the ball swinging around this morning. It's a 50, 20, I 50. Very well played. Rightly applauded by his teammates in the dugout. The run machine for Saudi Arabia, Abdul Wahid, 8 fours and a maximum, and look at the strike rate of 151. Power unleashed, but just taking the bottom of the wood of Faisal Khan, and not afraid to attack Hassan Khan. I think now the message is clear. They want to take on the spinners, get as many runs as possible. But also in the process, they need to make sure not to lose the wicket here. We so nearly had upsets, haven't we? We really have. This will be a couple more to the total. Bahrain and Kuwait, I felt both should have won on the opening day. He have a side none for two, chasing best part of 180. And Mohammed was aims back in the hutch. I think you're favourites. And then Bahrain, they hung around in that chase. Yeah, 178, I think they needed. They did everything that they could, but the fact they had an injury just meant they were ma essentially making the chase with 10 men. But without those two upsets, all of a sudden, we're probably traveling to the ground this morning thinking, okay, well, it's going to be Hong Kong, it'll be Nepal, it'll be Oman, it'll be UAE. This, for Saudi Arabia, would throw the cat amongst the pigeons. Well, absolutely. As of now, they're in a strong position and talking about those two games where Kuwait lost to UAE and Bahrain to Oman, I think credit should be given to UAE as well as Oman, that experience put in by the boys at the right time. Flays this one away and the fielder does very well out at deep cover. It's going to get us to the end of the 10th over. Time for a drinks break and a short break here in the commentary box with Saudi Arabia looking very good indeed. They're 88 for one. So the halfway stage of the first innings, and we've got a really good clash in store here, don't we? Hong Kong, obviously the higher ranked side, the favourites coming into 
this contest, having won their first, Saudi Arabia went down to Malaysia. But Abdul Wahid and Faisal Khan, the two, well, the two stars really of Saudi Arabia's batting lineup, they're making hay in spite of the sun not really shining today. We're going to see some leg breaks now. See the wrist spin of the one change to the team. Not really a day for wrist spinners. Rain at Kapoor, never easy when there's a bit of rain about. He starts very full indeed. Saudi Arabia will be the happier of the two sides, the halfway stage. Oh, absolutely. The way these two are getting those quick runs. And if you remember the last time when we saw this side in ACC Men's Premier Cup in Nepal, there has been visible progress in the batting lineup of Saudi Arabia, Abdul Wahid. We all know the way he gets his runs. But good to see Faisal Khan. He's applying himself out there in the middle. 21 of 16, giving that much needed support to Wahid. Yeah, and it was Wahid, Wahid that was the star of the show in, in Kathmandu as well, wasn't it? That innings of 124 not out he made against, I think it was Qatar that they beat by seven wickets at, at the TU ground. It was a fine knock, one of the knocks of the tournament. He followed that up a few days later with 95 against Oman. That was an Oman attack with all of their stars. Their bowling in their fielding continues to impress me. That was in the longer format, in the 50-over format the Premier Cup was in last year. I think if they get 170, 180 here, we've got a real game in our hands. The way they bowl and the way they bat, I think the game suits this shorter format. Quicker delivery. Nicely managed on the back foot. No chance for the fielder. Good looking shot. A much needed boundary. Looking dangerous out there in the middle is Wahid. Well, this is a quality shot. This is a shot right out of the top drawer. Look at the placement. Look at the way he gets it so far in front of square. An immediate pickup of the length. Yes, it's short and wide, but it was the googly. He was out of the back of the hand. He stood tall, gets on top of the bounce, and it races away for four. He's such a nice batter to watch. Take a look at the best of his innings so far. This fifth T20 I-50 for him. I think he's even better in ODI cricket. 96 for one, the score at the end of the 11th. Look at some of these shots, Mudasser. He continues to excel with the bat, coming down the track, playing all around the ground, playing as per the merit of the ball. A risky player, very strong towards his leg side, especially back of the wicket. And this was a good looking shot, played inside out. Abdul Wahid, yet again among the runs for Saudi Arabia. But good to see the way Faisal Khan is applying out there in the middle. He's got a maximum against Yasin Mutuza. After that, he's taking his own time. So Rona going for some runs in his first over. You just have to say, for the world game, so encouraging. Someone like Abdul Wahid, born in Riyadh, born and bred, coming through the Saudi Arabian system, through the Saudi under-19s. It's so good to see a batter of his quality. Remember, they've no turf pitches in Saudi Arabia. In the process of, of getting the first couple of ovals completed, I think that's in Riyadh. But almost all of their cricket they play, it's not even on artificial surfaces. It's on matting on top of concrete. So to be playing this well, okay, yes, they're very good batting surfaces here in Muscat. But if you're not often exposed to playing on grass, to develop a technique of the quality that he has. The one criticism we might have had historically was a little bit of a low strike rate, 120, 122 career in T20i cricket. But look at the acceleration that he's brought here today, striking well over 150, and he's given Saudi Arabia a platform that could well be a winning one. Now there's the power and the brilliance of Faisal Khan. Oh, it's not just game on here. It's the 100 up inside 12 overs. Saudi Arabia, they're uh, well in front of the game right now for me. Extraordinary batting display from Faisal Khan. Looking ordinary as San Khan. A bit quicker. And goes towards that offside. And 100 comes up for Saudi Arabia in 12th over with the boundary. I tell you who there's a shade of in that stroke. It's his namesake. It's Azam Khan from Pakistan, very similar the way in which 
got low into his stance and then gets it up and over. Cover, brilliant batting. Game on here in a big way. Saudi Arabia, we've had close to upsets. Are we going to see the first one today? Sensible. Got the boundary, now rotating the strike. So not afraid to take on Hassan Khan. So the struggle continues for the bowlers of Hong Kong to break this partnership. 27 of 19, Faisal Khan and Abdul Wahid on 61. Well, there's a yelp of frustration, a groan. We almost heard it here in our soundproof box. So loud was the cry from Faisal Khan. He wanted to repeat the dose. Wanted to go inside out over extra again. A little flatter, though, from Isan Khan. And completely mistimed it, but he will keep the strike. 12 have been bowled. It's 104 for one. Look at the the best of Saudi Arabia in this format. This partnership now worth 76. Abdul Wahid has been involved in all four of their highest partnerships in their history for the first, second, third, and fourth wicket coming against the likes of Kuwait, Cambodia, Japan, and Bhutan. Never had more than a 102 run partnership before. These two are looking good to go past that. And next couple of overs are very key. They did all the hard work. 12 overs, 104. The good thing, nine wickets in hand. The problem for Saudi Arabia has been that lower down order. Heavily dependent on the top order. And delivering the goods at the right time is Abdul Wahid and Faisal Khan. And Yasin Murtada comes back into the attack. Well, a very special moment for Faisal Khan. I'm not sure if he knows it, if he's one that follows his stats. A moment of history. The first Saudi Arabian batter to get to 1,000 T20i runs. It's come at a strike rate of nearly 170. A moment of magic and one for the memory banks for him. Brilliant batting. A proud moment for Faisal Khan. Shimmy down the track. Needed a better effort from Babar Hayat. Just falling short of Barber, a couple of runs has been added to the total. But what a proud moment for Faisal Khan, becoming the first batter for Saudi Arabia to reach the thousand runs in T20 format. A good partnership flourishing between these two. This one's helped away into the leg side. See if we can get one more look at that. I don't want to call it a drop catch because I don't think he got there. You need to have your best fielder in your team at long on for me off a left arm spinner. It's the most important spot. Should he have got there? It was very slow off the block. Putting that extra effort. And coming down the track of Faisal Khan. And this is what happened a couple of deliveries ago. Should be down the track. And look at that effort from Babar Hayat. You need an extra effort from the fielders. When nothing is going in favor of the bowlers. I'm calling it a chance. That should have been taken for me. That's brilliant batting. Outstanding from Wahid. The forward press with the front foot, then deep in the crease when he recognizes it's not full. He's hammered him down the ground once. This time he cuts him to death. This is outstanding batting. And look at that adjustment. He made a mistake a couple of deliveries ago, coming down the track. Now staying deep in the crease. Negotiated the delivery quite well. And good to see some proper cricketing strokes we are witnessing from these two batters. Well, we're seeing one of the partnerships of the tournament here. And it's getting better and better. Should be another couple here. What can they parlay this position into? Can they... Take the 115 for one into 200 plus. We'll find out in the last seven. Saudi Arabia, 115 for one.
So 13 overs done, 115 for the loss of one and a much needed break for Andrew and in comes Mikhail Waswani. Welcome Mikhail, looking good. Is Saudi Arabia and full mark should be given to Wahid and Faisal Khan. Uh, thank you, Mudassar. Good afternoon. Yes, indeed, taking nothing away from their batting. Hong Kong has not bowled to their ability. Fair to say that Hong Kong China can do much better. They've just about given a lot of width and full deliveries for the batters to free their arms. That's gone aerial, that's gone high. Fielder coming underneath it. Just as I said, will this be an opportunity taken? It's done well. Very good catch because that was in the air for a very long time. It had gone very high and Anshuman Rat picks up an absolute beauty. And in comes Mikhail and out goes Faisal Khan. Was looking dangerous, trying to take on a Ronak. It was miles up in the air. A good, well judged catch taken by Anshuman Rat. A much needed breakthrough has been provided by Ronak. And full marks should be given to the captain, Nizakat Khan. A change of ends working in favor of Ronak. A good knock comes to an end. 30 of 24 balls with the help of two fours and a maximum. Just the right time for them to take a water break as well and just regroup and reassess and re strategize because they've been under the pump for a long time now. A good opportunity for Hong Kong China to just come back into the game and put the breaks. 115 for two in the 14th. Saudi should be looking at something close to 180, 190. They need this win to stay alive in the competition. And now the depth of their batting will be tested as well. Abdul Manan Ali, another very fine batter. They have the depth, but they don't have the players who've shown that kind of consistency. Mudassar. This is what we have seen in the first game from a strong position. They went on to lose that game against Malaysia. Yet again, after that good start provided by Wahid, he has lost his partner, Faisal Khan. Yet again, they need to build up a partnership. The new man, Abdul Manan Ali, Rona Kapoor, getting his first wicket this tournament. Nicely managed off the mark with that single. And looking at the track, you need to be brave enough to give that flight what he offered to Faisal Khan. Got a bit greedy on Faisal Khan. And now it depends on this man, Abdul Wahid. He's on 70 of 44. Quicker delivery, back off length. Nicely managed. Good work done by Dhananjay. Running hard for that second run. Lightning quick, Wahid and Manan. And that's what I've been referring to, Mudassir. The bowlers have just not bowled the right channel. This was another long hop half tracker. Enough time for Abdul Wahid to go deep into the crease and just play it. Look at that. The fielders have been kept busy all day this afternoon. He has been brilliant. If we talk about the technique of uh, Abdul Wahid, a good throw, one bounce, but too quick between the wickets was Abdul Wahid. Oh yes, he's class and carnage at the same time. Way outside the off stump. Really don't understand the strategy from Marona Kapoor. He got that big wicket of Faisal Khan by giving that flight. Especially on this wicket, if you're bowling back off length and a bit quicker in the air, it won't help you and it won't help the cause of your team. Goes down on one knee and gets his first maximum. Abdul Manan Ali getting better off Rana Kapoor. Oh, look at the confidence and conviction in that shot. Another delivery that was more of a flighted, tossed up one, inviting the batter into the shot. And there goes Manan Ali, down on one knee towards the cow corner region. He's just walked out to bat. But the manner in which he's connected it just goes to show the mindset of the Saudi batters. Absolutely. A positive approach has been adapted by the batters of Saudi Arabia. They made a mistake against Malaysia, but they had some other plans. Trying to post a good total. It can give something for the bowlers to defend. It was in the slot. Fielder settling in. Is it a maximum? Yes, no chance for the long off fielder. So back to back maximums and ends though with the flourish. He's just bettered that previous hit of his. 
One down Kao Kona and the other one straight behind the bowler. This is batting at its very best. Abdul Manan Ali has played some breathtaking shots. Look at that. He didn't quite get to the pitch of the ball. It's more back of the length, but look at the man in which he's cleared it. Everybody turns spectator. 14 gone, 131 for two. I'll tell you, one of the most elegant batters in international cricket, certainly Abdul Wahid, is right up there. The manner in which he's played his cricket time and again for Saudi Arabia up front on top. Absolute delight to watch. So good on the eyes. Nasrul Rana, change in bowling, pace introduced. Nicely managed on the back foot. Cut hard. The fielder, Dhananjay Rao, comes into play. And good to see, if we talk about the facilities, Back in Saudi Arabia, most of the games they play on mat. It's quite incredible to see these batters coming here and performing quite well. And showing everyone, if you have that belief, to believe in yourself, you can achieve anything. Nothing is impossible. Trying to achieve their dreams. They were exceptional wayward so extras now coming in Nasrul into his first over the first wide have been conceded and it's going to be a relaxed dugout as well the Saudi dugout look at that captain Hisham Sheikh wearing a smile cracking a joke with coach Kabir Khan and they're a happy bunch everything is going well so far they may have dropped the first game but they have put up a very strong performance so far with the bat and comebacks is a necessity in any sport and this has clearly been that kind of a game for them Good job done by the fielder and half stop. They need to be very careful for next one or two overs. Keeping in mind eight wickets in hand. Next five overs, at least they should get 50 more runs. Anything above 180, 185 would be a good total to defend on this surface. Seven extra so far in this innings. Half-hearted appeal. The wicketkeeper was interested. The bowler, not quite sure. Take a look at that once again. It was more of bat hitting the turf. I'm sure they all want to see the back of Abdul Wahid at this stage. Wicketkeeper there for Hong Kong, China. Zishan Ali. He'll have a role to play later with the bat. Yeah, just coming back to Abdul Wahid, as, as an opener, a strike rate of close to 122. And uh, he's clearly dished out the runs, an average of 32, a best of 99. He got that far, a highest. What a fine player. Nasr Larana. he's begun well, but for that wide, he's kept things quiet. But the luxury of wickets that Saudi Arabia have, they'll always be on the attack. Oh, absolutely, and looking for this big wicket is Nasrul. Nicely managed. Not trying to force and get those quick runs. A very calculative innings we are witnessing from Abdul Wahid. The good thing is, they made sure to rotate the strikes. They made sure to get those maximum boundaries and running hard between the wickets, converting those singles into doubles. So they came out with a plan against Hong Kong, China. A couple of more deliveries left in this over. Wayward, wayward. For the second time, going way outside the off stump in this over. Well, it's fairly understandable what's going through Nasrullah's mind because the way Abdul Manan Ali hit the last two sixes, Anything in the arc 
the bowler is just trying to keep things away from him at this stage <laughs> fairly understandable it's a pressure game an important one saudi wins this fixture all teams three teams at least will be with two games and one win each so it'll be a three way battle then pule is hotting up back to back wides bowling as per the plan because there is no protection towards the leg side the fielder inside the 30 yard circle the fine leg and the square leg well nasrullah rana needs to be reminded the line belongs to the empire and that was clearly outside the line very good decision there by abdul jabbar rana has to go and rebowl that He's having a excellent game out there in the middle abdul jabbar from khatar alongside him is tariq rashid from pakistan nicely manage so single three wides and four singles can he get a boundary has been a lengthy over as many as eight deliveries already bowled and this is where uh, hong kong china need to get a bit more tidy and disciplined already things are off the hook for them Saudi Arabia sitting pretty 138 for 2 with 8 wickets in hand another 30 deliveries left played in the gap some work for Babar Hayat a misfield and couple of runs with those couple of runs they got 9 runs in the first over of Nasrullah 15 overs done Saudi Arabia 140 for the loss of 2 good toss to win here for saudi arabia you would have thought in overcast conditions with the ball maybe doing something you'd be tempted to bowl first but they were very clear with the decision you were at the toss uh, mudassir i'm sure you can add more perspective to it they had a problem chasing the target against malaysia so they came out with a new plan new day new beginning for saudi arabia and when you're pushed on the back foot it's always good to come with a positive approach attack is the key for Saudi Arabia they started off really well and if you talk about the bowling of uh, Hong Kong they struggled against the Qatar though they have posted 201 against Qatar they leaked plenty of runs so in comes another talented all-rounder Azaz Khan yes no this could be close a run out but the bowler should have been maybe behind the stumps I just feel in all of this the batter may have made his ground Abdul Wahid was pushing for the single he was the caller for the run Manan responded late and even though it's been referred up I just feel the batters may have made it So yes and no between these two wanted to get back onto the strike Abdul Wahid forcing his partner to go for that run and responding a bit late there was an opportunity to get some runs but played straight towards dhananjay needed a better throw i think he made his ground with ease and also the collect and the throw from dhananjay was a little slow look at that he's made it comfortably no brainer here for the tv empire now this is where i feel maybe the bowler should have been standing behind the stumps just to save that extra bit of time all is well that ends well for saudi arabia everything going their way the basics were not right on the previous delivery especially from azaz you need to be behind the stumps so a quick single now it's abdul wahid is back on strike and it won't be easy for him to target azaz and quite interestingly he's bowling his first over that to the 16th over of the innings number 11 for hong kong in the air fielder settling and he takes the catch no mistake yet again it's anshuman rath well he's a safe pair of hands 
and this means that a wonderful batting effort by Abdul Wahid comes to an end. It had to take a good catch to get a great innings out. That was in the air for a long time, but Rath had to just come a few yards forward and take that catch. But what an innings by Abdul Wahid. He's been Mr. Dependable, played the sheet anchor role, 77 of 51, had a strike rate of 150, opening the innings for Saudi. Four, 10 fours and 1 six. He's done the job for his team and he can walk with his head held high. Well done, Abdul Wahid. It's 141 for three. The big wicket going down and in comes Waji. Nicely managed. A bit sluggish in the field and two quick runs have been taken off the mark with those couple of runs Waji. Waji Ul Hassan is a new batter. What should be the plan here, Mikhail, after losing Faisal Khan and Abdul Wahid? Another 35, 40 runs. Much more than that because the luxury of wickets is there. Abdul Manan is looking good. I reckon he'll be allowed to play his natural game. And Vaji will just be asked to bat around him. The aim is to stitch another good partnership of 30 to 40 runs. And the aim is to attack. Saudi Arabia should keep in mind the depth of batting that Hong Kong China have. Nicely played over there. Wide of the fielder at backward point. And... Uh, Good running between the wickets as well. Good running. Apply the pressure on the fielders. An ordinary delivery, but getting better off for Wajul Hassan. Played straight into the hands of final leg fielder Dhananjay Rao. So double strike in this over from Azaz. Oh yes, not the greatest of deliveries and not the greatest of shots as well. Short fine leg comes into the picture. Dhananjay with that catch. And Vajul Hassan stay in the middle is short-lived. Two quick wickets. Hong Kong China have made a comeback into the game. Wicket number four for Saudi Arabia. Vaji has to walk back. Two and two. Couldn't contribute much to that. He's a little livid with himself. But a good opening year for Hong Kong China. It's one forty-three for four. Captain Hisham Sheikh walks out to the middle with a job to do. The team has got off to a good start. Can he give them the finishing touch? That remains to be seen. Three quick wickets are going down. This is the beauty of this shorter format. One, two good overs. You are back in the game. Wajil Hassan back in the hut. And comes out the captain Hisham Sheikh for the first time facing Azaz. Nicely done. And Madhusur, in all of it, it's been a spectacular over by Ezaz. He's got two wickets, conceded only four runs in his first over. Now, you talk about bowlers coming and changing the momentum-breaking partnerships. Well, he's been that partnership breaker. What was Nizakat Khan thinking? It took a lot of time for him to get Ezaz into the attack and straight away, he's making a difference here. A couple of wickets, two good batters back in the hut. Now, it all depends on Abdul Manan Ali for Saudi Arabia. Good over. Successful over from Mohammad Ajaz. Getting a couple of wickets, going for five runs in his first over. 16 overs done. Losing a couple of wickets in this over. Saudi Arabia 145 for the loss of four.
Well, the skyscrapers there, so Saudi Arabia started off very well despite uh, the loss of Saad Khan. It was Faisal Khan and Abdul Wahid who went about getting the runs in quick time. Then after Faisal Khan departed, Manan Ali started as well. Ayush Shukla has been brought back into the attack. Take outside edge and that'll... Ch- oh, what a, what a fielding effort. Fresh from a catch, a short fine leg. Dhananjeb puts in one of the finest dives to save a certain four. A full mark should be given to Dhananjay for that effort, especially keeping in mind the fast bowler, thick outside edge. And in comes Dhananjay for rescue, saving a couple of runs. Look, look at the recovery and release there by Dhananjay. Slide, pick up, throw. This is very good agility shown by him. Place that on the up, wide of the field at backward point. Once again, it's just about going towards the deep point boundary. Two runs. I think the plan should be simple here for Hisham and Abdul Mannan. Just take seven or eight runs against Ayu Shukla because he's one of their premier fast bowler. If they can get another six, seven runs and they can end this over on 155, next three overs, get 30 runs, he'll be... Going up above 180, 185. Bit innovative. The calculative risk has been taken by Hisham Sheikh. No protection towards that square leg region. And four runs for Hisham Sheikh. Yes, you have to take your calculated risk at this stage. You can't let the bowling team dominate. Look at that. Premeditated moves in his crease and picks his spot as well. Fuller delivery, great adjustment. And great innovation. It's always so pleasing to watch these talented players come out and perform really well for their teams. This is what happens. This is what happens. When you go for a boundary, he forced Shukla to change his line in the process. An extra has been conceded. And that's why they say it's so very important to play with the mind of the opposition as well. This is exactly what happened. The previous one was a fuller delivery. He played that over leg side behind the wicket. And this time, as you mentioned, Mudassar, he's forced him to alter his line and length. And in the process, he's secured a wide. Edgy, but that'll fetch Saudi Arabia's single. So this has been a good over so far. Already nine runs coming off the four deliveries. They was talking about 155 if they can get by the end of this over. A couple of more deliveries left. And it's 154. It's Abdul, Abdul Mannan Ali on strike. Coming back into the side after an injury. Ayush. Change of pace. Nicely done. Yeah, good productive over so far. Just trying to go too hard at that Abdul Mannan Ali. Fairly understandable. Into the 17th over, you want to throw everything at it. Throwing the kitchen sink. Look at that impact. Slower delivery. You'll get to see more of this in the final overs. Experience of Ayush Shukla. Those cutters. Just deceiving Abdul Mannan Ali. 10 runs so far. Nicely done. Running hard that first run. Brilliant. Extraordinary. Good thinking from these two batters. Converting that single into double. 13 runs coming off this over. Hong Kong China have been caught napping in this particular game against Saudi Arabia. It's been a productive 117 gone, 157 for four. Seven bowlers have been used by Captain Nizakat. Clearly shows the struggle to get those wickets initially. Even the likes of Hassan Khan, three overs gone for 20. Yasin Murtuza gone for plenty. Four overs, 38. Couple of wickets for Ezaz and he will continue to bowl his second over. So last three overs, 157 for the loss of four. How many more they can add here, Mikhail? 18 deliveries left. 
nicely played towards the cover sweeper region two more runs runs coming thick and fast and just coming back to the projected score of saudi arabia i feel with another 17 deliveries adding another 30 i'm looking at something close to 180 185 they have six wickets in hand abdul banan ali is batting on a 21 10 ball 21 and hisham has started off well they should look at something close to 180 190 fielder settling but no chance for anshuman rat power unleashed on the back foot from abdul manan ali a maximum against azaz look at that for a shot another long hop at a decent pace hits it in front of the wicket just played along with anshuman rat who thought for a while that it was coming to him only to realize it sails over him for a home run what a shot and this is why i feel saudi arabia are looking good to get somewhere close to 180 and 190 absolutely and if they want to go beyond 190 this man needs to stay till the end get couple of more maximums he's targeting one of the successful bowler ajaz change of pace running hard a poor throw yet again from the fielder helping manan to get another single Oh yes but that could have been a close call had it been a direct hit 166 good delivery shot and wide chips it to the fielder at backward point not too sure if it was the quickest fastest throws but there again not too sure if Ezaz was in position to take that and inflict a run out good effort coming from Ronak Kapoor saving some runs nicely managed on the back foot such an inspiring story if we talk about these countries associate nations especially talking about saudi arabia lack of facilities but they have got the right man their head coach kabir khan helping these boys to achieve their dreams oh yes i've had a couple of chats with him in recent times always on the lookout of him for improvement and development that's picked away that goes over fine and that'll go for a four as well Abdul Manan Ali is unstoppable this afternoon. He's walked out, dispatched three sixes already and a four in his innings of 32 of 13. And he anticipated that back off length delivery, going deep into the crease and goes over that fine leg. So runs coming in the second over of Azaz. Attack. is the key for abdul manan and for saudi arabia they're targeting now azaz already leaked 14 runs 171 hisham looking good 11 of 6 and what an knock he's playing abdul manan ali 32 of just 13 balls smart smart piece of thinking 15 runs from the second over of Azaz with that single 18 overs done 172 for the loss of four we've got to also make note that this is the match being played on turf 2 mudassir it's a high scoring venue high scoring ground most of the matches played over here teams have gone in excess of 200 and most teams chasing have come very close to it as well and that's why saudi arabia are aware that the pass score on this surface should be somewhere close to 200 because we understand the nature of the surface and now with the sun beating hard the outfield also is not that slow and that heavy and that's why something close to 200 may just about give the saudi bowlers some cushion and a total to bowl at Absolutely, if they can pose at 190, they do have a very good bowling attack, especially with the new ball. Looking for this first couple of points in this tournament, as of now in a strong position, Saudi Arabia. Ayu Shukla bowling the 19th over. It's Manan on strike. A low full toss, hammered. A brilliant effort, but no stopping. four runs and more runs for abdul manan ali and what a way to start this over what a way to start the penultimate over abdul manan ali 
has not missed out on the scoring opportunities. Not the greatest of deliveries. A valiant effort by Rath, but he can't stop that boundary. Moving in the crease, taking it on the full, and hitting it through covers. An extraordinary batting effort we are witnessing from Saudi Arabia batters. Straight away under pressure is Ayush Shukla. Nicely done. Bit fuller. Is there a bat involved? A brilliant delivery from good comeback from Ayush Shukla. Oh yes, very good comeback. Very good delivery. Block hole delivery right underneath the bat. And they'll need more of this. Take a look at it once again. Hit for a four of his very first delivery. Got that right underneath. May have just also got an inside edge. And that's what the batter was indicating as well. Wayward, wayward. The extras have been a big, big concern for Hong Kong, China. Holding the fingers, trying to bowl it away from Hisham. A bit wayward. Zishan Ali has been kept busy behind the stems by the bowlers of Hong Kong, China. Oh, what a shot. Surprised everyone the way he's getting those runs. Hisham Sheikh getting better off Ayush Shukla onto the pads and goes over the fine leg. And no better way to celebrate that shot but to land it into your own dressing room. <laughs> the entire Saudi dugout, well, they clearly enjoyed that scoop right into them. What a wonderful execution. Intent is one, executing is another part to it. Hisham Sheikh so far has looked very good behind the wicket. Getting into position, picking those deliveries early, picking that length early as well. 184, we were talking about 180, 190. We should be looking at 200 plus now. They need 16 more in nine deliveries. Change of pace coming down the track. The problem for Hong Kong China in this inning has been the premier bowlers. They went for runs. The likes of Yasin Murtuza going for 38, wicketless. Ehsan Khan bowled just three overs, going for 20, wicketless. It was Ezaz who got a couple of wickets. But the good news for Saudi Arabia, Abdul Mannan Ali. What an arc he's playing for his team. 38 of 16 balls. Uh, what a shot. Incredible hitting here. A bit fuller. Goes over the deep. Extra cover. What an over. An expensive over in progress. Fuller this time. Going down on his knee. Clearing his left foot and playing it over covers. Not the easiest of shot. And when you fetch a maximum out of it. Just goes to show the kind of batter you are. 44 or 17, what an innings this is turning out to be by Abdul Manan Ali. This time, trying to go big towards the cow corner, fielder settling. No mistake, he has been brilliant in the outfield, Anshuman Rath. So the danger man, he did the damage with the bat, Abdul Manan Ali, what a knock he played for his team. 44 of just 18 balls, but some sigh of relief for Shukla and Hong Kong. Oh yes, this time trying to drag the ball outside off towards the mid-wicket region. Didn't quite get underneath that one. And a very good catch taken by Anshuman Rath in the deep. Respite here for Hong Kong China. They've been under the cosh for a while now. Half the side back in the dugout. But what an inning. Stand and applaud Abdul Manan Ali's contribution. Walked out 44 of 18. A strike rate of 244. Just what you want from a middle order bat. Four huge sixes and two fours. Adding to the team's total. It's 191 for five.
So it will be the experience as Hassan Khan who will bowl in the final over. Managed to put in the gap, chased by the fielder, no stopping. And what an effort coming from Kapoor. So running hard. So three runs have been taken by Hisham and Usman Khalid. But I, rec I reckon that's going to be referred and that's going to be a very close call as well. Oh, it's been given four in fact. Tariq Rashid does not need to go up. Four runs here for Hisham Sheikh. Gets a leading edge and goes for a four. I think full marks should be given to one of the fielders of uh, Hong Kong China straight away. Giving that signal to the Empire, it's a boundary. Going for runs, Hassan Khan. 195 for the loss of five. Going for that reverse shot, trying to be innovative. Misses the line completely. Strikes for the first time in this game. Hassan Khan getting better off Hisham. I'm not too sure if the shot was needed. Hisham was looking so good playing the conventional hits. And maybe the innovative scoops. This was maybe a rush of blood here. And in the process, he perishes as well. Esan Khan keeps it straight and it crashes into the stumps. Not much of celebration here for Hong Kong China. However, Hisham played a little bit of a cameo. Walks back for 22 in 10. Curtsy a 6 and 2-4. That a strike rate of 220. That uh, partnership between him and Manan Ali certainly coming in very handy. It's 195 for 6. Zainul Abedin comes in, trying to take on Hassan, and a mistake has been made. But no mistake from Nizakat Khan. It's back-to-back -back wickets going down for Saudi Arabia. The experience of Hassan Khan coming in handy in the final over. And a word or two by the captain as well. That was high, but a very fine catch taken in the deep. Wicket number seven here for Saudi Arabia. Hassan Khan with his second Zainul Abedin has to depart without troubling the scorers. It's 195 for 7. So two Usmans out there in the middle for Saudi Arabia. It's Usman Najib who will be on strike facing Hassan on a hat-trick Hassan Khan. An inside edge running hard. Just a single. It's a good comeback going for four runs then a couple of wickets going down then a single. They need one hit to go beyond the 200. For the third time, nothing going in favor of Saudi Arabia in this over. The third time getting better off the batters of Saudi Arabia is Ahsan Khan. Well, the senior statesman, the veteran, once again delivers the goods for his side. A little bit of a celebration. He's taken three wickets in this over and quite certainly he's saved quite a few runs as well. Usman Khalid walks back for not. It's 196 for 8. What an over this is turning out to be.
the new batter Ishtiaq Ahmed. Five balls, five runs, and three wickets so far in this over. Go straight. No chance for the fielders at long on and long off and ends the inning with the flourish. The maximum to get off the mark for Ishtia. And with that maximum, Saudi Arabia going past the 200 mark. Well, he can raise his bat in delight. He's just about got that one delivery and he can go back and say, I got you the six. What a shot. Just clears that left foot of his, goes over the bowler's head. And the dugout as well was thrilled with that home run. What a performance this has been by Saudi Arabia. Electing to bat first. They've got to 202. And that's why now Nizakat Khan and his boys will have to just get into that huddle. And look at this chase that's coming up. Because they now have to chase down a mammoth 200 plus runs. They won the first game. They got 200 plus batting first. Can they do that batting second? That'll be the question. They looked very, very ordinary in the field with, with the ball. And we'll take a look at the batting effort. Full marks to Abdul Wahid. What a way he started off. Elegance personified. At the same time, he was effective and result-oriented. 77 of 51. Saad Khan missed out. Faisal Khan caught the cameo. 30 of 24. The partnership between them was crucial. Wo then came in Abdul Manan Ali. And he started off with great intent and teamed up with Hisham Sheikh, the captain, to provide the low middle order blitz for Saudi Arabia. Then it was a little bit of a wobble, but by then Saudi had already put themselves in a position of strength. 11 extras, 20 overs, 202 for 8 is what Saudi ended on. Seven bowlers have been tried by the captain of Hong Kong, China. Ayo Shukla going for plenty of runs in his quota of 442 runs leaked by him at wicket to his name. Dhananjay Chetan Rao, 3 overs, 35, a wicket to his name. Though Hassan Khan got 3 wickets, but it was too late going for 31 runs. Yasin Murtuza, wicketless, and a couple of wickets for Ezaz, but he also gone for plenty of runs. And 11 extras have been conceded by Hong Kong China bowlers. And at the end, Saudi Arabia managed to go beyond the 200. And it will be a psychological advantage for Saudi Arabia when they'll come back the second half. And let's see the batting highlights of Saudi Arabia. They started off really well thanks to Abdul Wahid and his partner Saad. Well, Wahid particularly was severe on the bowlers. He was held by some ordinary bowling. Saad Khan playing across the line. And that's when Dhananjay struck very early. However... It was Abdul Wahid who took the attack to the opposition. Severe on the bowlers, the spinners, the pacers, playing all sides of the wicket. Faisal Khan joined the party and he also continued to treat bowlers with utter disdain. He played some big hits as well. And by the end of it, he was caught by Anshuman Rath while looking to go big. Manan Ali then came in and he looked unstoppable as well. He just walked out and hammered two sixes. It was Abdul Wahid who continued to bat in good way, but he also fell, holding out in the deep to Anshuman Rath. He was kept busy today, Rath, with a couple of catches. Then a few soft dismiss dismissals here, and they just pegged Saudi Arabia back, but Hisham Sheikh and Abdul Manan Ali took the attack to the opposition and got the big hits at ease. The bowling was wayward, and uh, it was Hisham Sheikh's innovation at times that got them some sixes as well. Manan Ali... Continued to bat big, but he also in his bid to go high and far, hold out to the field, Anshuman Rath, who took his third catch of the match. Hisham too, trying to be a little bit innovative, ended up just about giving away his wicket. They had done the job by then. Runs were coming in thick and fast. Ehsan Khan in the final over got three wickets, this being one of them. But the final ball of the delivery clearly helped uh, Saudi Arabia. This was the eighth wicket, Ehsan Khan. Did everything right and that final delivery went for a 6 that took Saudi Arabia past 200 as well as they finished on 202 for 8 in their 20 overs. It's been a very strong batting effort by Saudi. This after they fell short of runs in the last game yesterday chasing Malaysia's target. So this means that when Hong Kong China come out to bat, they will need 203 runs in 120 deliveries and that required rate will be something over 10. We'll take a short break, but on the other side, we'll bring you the chase.
once again welcome back to this beautiful venue here in Muscat Oman we are coming live from Oman Cricket Academy and it's game number 10 Saudi Arabia winning the toss and opting to bat first and the batters doing a pretty good job going past the 200 mark thanks to a brilliant knock from Wahid 77 of 51 and Faisal Khan giving him much needed support adding 30 44 quick 44 from Abdul Manan Ali and Hisham Sheikh always among the runs for his team 22 added in just 10 balls a good job done by the batters of Saudi Arabia and they have posted a mammoth total on board and for Hong Kong to keep their 100% winning record in this tournament they need to get 203 in their allotted 20 overs a daunting task but they do have some experienced batter in their lineup. The likes of Anshuman Rath, Izakat Khan, Babar Hayat. They will be tested against the bowling attack of Saudi Arabia. The weather has been very kind here. And two empaths who are having a very good outing is Tariq Rashid. And behind him is Abdul Jabbar from Qatar. And joining me in the com box, for the first time in the second innings, it will be Andrew, welcome Andrew. A good job has been done by the boys of Saudi Arabia. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I think this is very much not just game on its advantage to the men in green. And this, make no mistake, for me would be their biggest T20I win in their history given the context, given the stage of the competition and given what it could mean for this group. It would keep Saudi Arabia's fate in their own hands. Imagine they'd beaten Malaysia yesterday. They'd be about to make it two from two if they could defend this total. Instead, they really need to win today. If they don't, with Nepal to come, which is going to be a tough challenge for them, it could be a bridge too far. The big miss for them, they don't have their quickest bowler in the starting 11 today. So there is no Ati for Rahman. So they're going to have to rely upon the likes of the skipper. We'll see Hisham Sheikh bowl those kind of little Sikander Raza, Sunil Narayan esque off breaks. And then we'll see the three seamers operate. It's going to be Ishtiak Ahmed to open up, probably the quickest in the 11. But make no mistake, anytime you're chasing down 200 plus, it's never easy, no matter how good the batting pitches are. It's going to be Yassim Mertatsa in that role that he performs sometimes, not always, up at the top of the order, alongside the stylish, the elegant, the graceful Ansem and Rath, quality operator. I think we're in for about 90 minutes of real entertainment here. Hong Kong, for me, have it all to do. Especially keeping in mind that they need 10 runs every over. So slip in position, it's a Murtadon strike against Ishtiak. A good start, bowling at the right channel. A good field setup from Hisham Sheikh, giving that slip to the fast bowler. A lot depends on the on these two batters, they need to make sure to provide a good start on Shuman Rath and Yasin Murtuda, two experienced batter for Hong Kong, China. But we're in for Saudi Arabia. If we can bowl to a right channel, they can force the batters to make a mistake. And in the process, they can get those wickets. The first runs on board for Hong Kong, shape of wide. Down the leg and a good job done by the wicket keeper. Well, yeah, it depends how you look at it. You could say three runs saved, or you could say one given away. It's moved late, so he's actually done well to get something on it. But this is the movement we saw with the new ball for Hong Kong until that big six was hit down into the wadi. But if he can get it right, there's no shortage of pace. He's actually beaten Mertatsa for pace there. Early wickets. And everything will be pointing towards Saudi Arabia, pulling off the biggest win in their history. Driven. Slight fumble. Yes and no. No chance for that single. So having a slip, trying to bowl towards that off stump line, forcing the batter to go for the drive. There's every chance, Mudasser, that this game will be decided in the third discipline in the field. Hong Kong, for me, were poor. They gave away plenty of fumbles. We saw Babar Hayat not go for that catch or not quite get to that catch. Two very blatant, very easy missed run out opportunities as well. Easily could have seen the back of Abdul Wahid before he made 77. 
And if Saudi Arabia field well, okay, they'll have to bowl well as well. But if they significantly outfield Hong Kong, that could be the difference of, what, 20, 30 runs in the game, and that could be the margin of victory. Absolutely. And, uh, Andrew, you have seen these teams battling against each other very closely. They have a very good chance, as said by you, after posting 202. The bowling should be the right channel. Still persisting with that first slip. Nicely managed, going past the diving fine leg field as the first boundary for Yasin Murtuda and first four runs for Hong Kong. Usman Khalid is in the ring at fine leg. It's such a difficult place to field because you always see the ball so late. But this is what I'm talking about. Okay, not easy, but you've got to stop that. Parry it around the corner, you save three runs. Already the counter's in the negative for Saudi Arabia's fielding. They're going to have to feel their hearts out. 120 deliveries out there. Batting conditions, if anything, as the day goes on, might get a little easier because the sun is out. That's really just the first three, four, five overs. There'll be movement through the air. Ishtiak showing his skills, in-swingers, out-swingers. Has to get the line right. Loud appeal coming into the left-hand batter and Ishtiak strikes for the first time. The finger going up. Convinced is Abdul Jabbar. Yasin Murtada departs. Well, there's the early wicket. It's not the big, big one of Ansem and Rath. But I'll tell you something. They'll take every wicket they can get. It's full. It's straight. Oh, well, I tell you what. You may as well just turn and walk off. That is as plumb as they come. Pitched on middle stump. It's knocking middle stump out of the ground. Murtaz has gone for four. It's seven for one. Coming into the left-hander and trying to play across the line. An easy decision for Jabbar. Removing that first slip. Straight away coming into that left-hander. And getting better off Murtaza is Ishtiak Ahmed. And then knows the importance of this wicket. So an early breakthrough has been provided by Ishtiak Ahmed. And in comes another talented batter. The captain, Muhammad Nizakat Khan. Oh. Oh, Nizakat on strike. The new batter and a slip in position. Ball just keeping a bit low. Look at that energy. All of a sudden, wicket going down and they're pumped up. First over done. A wicket for Ishtiak, Hong Kong, seven. They have lost Murtaza. Yeah, just so impressed I am with Saudi. Every time I've seen them over the last 12 to 18 months, they're improving every game. And so much of that goes down to the head coach. Just love what they're doing with their cricket. They're not looking for a quick fix. So many of the associate nations, sometimes when you see them come up through the ranks, they, they hire people in. There's the man, the main man in the blue polo shirt, the flip-flops on, the head coach. Kabir Khan, he did wonders, didn't he? Led Afghanistan all the way through their meteoric rise, and he's trying to do it again. He's plotting again, this time with the men in green. What a start, Ahmad Raza, and nicely negotiated by Anshuman Rat. Chased by the fielder, Faisal Khan. Straight away, a couple of runs. And how important is the role of coach, especially when we talk about associate nations, as we have seen. Monty Sir doing wonders with Nepal team and Kabir Khan. They don't have those kind of facilities back home in Saudi Arabia. But helping these boys to achieve their dreams is their head coach, Kabir Khan. Struck nicely, but 
there's a field destination is single yeah i think often you think of getting a head coach of an associate nation you think okay well let's go in and let's coach the men's national team it's often a lot more than that you're really you're the, the main ad- advocate for the sport in the country you the umpire having a sway out of the way there it does really well they'll often really be the spokesman for the sport in the country they'll often have to go and meet councils or or governments to plead for whether it be funding or facilities or support and often what you see in many of the associates even the leading associates in the world the likes of a Scotland and Netherlands and and Namibia dancing down the track and clear the mid off field with ease technically very sound bat and nizakat getting better off ahmed raza yeah nice stroke cuz he's hitting with the swing isn't he so he does that really effectively doesn't try to overhit just gets enough on it little dance down the track but yeah you'll sometimes see some countries hire a name okay and i'm not going to give give you names but you'll see an indian or a, an australian or a south african or a former english head coach who might have been a brilliant test cricketer but with due respect they'll have played in amazing facilities their whole lives so when they go to an associate country it's just a completely different ball game and get it home easily for the single and someone like amonti desai is a great example kabir khan too let's hope the bowler is okay here I wonder has he gone down in his in his follow through you get guys who, who come from maybe first class structures but they don't really have the expectations just one more look at this not sure where the issue was for the bowler no impact there maybe just colliding with the batter we'll see if we can get one more look the famous story about adrian birrell who who wasn't a name he's not a, he was a first class cricketer in south africa yes but he wasn't a famous test cricketer he came to ireland and he was given a car and that was his office and he said well, where do i work out of he said well that's your office get out in the road and here's the impact between the batter and bowler yeah no intent to talk complete mistake so it's such a difficult job you've got to scout the youth you've got to maybe help put in place the structures for the cricket whether it be club cricket or or district cricket or some kind of first class structure you're trying to implement it's much more than just coaching 15 players it really is coming into rut and nicely managed chase by the fielder so runs are coming with ease in this over of ahmed raza rightly talking about the coaches of uh, associate nations i think it's all about the passion they have to give back to this game working hard on these boys developing their skills it's an inspiring story if we talk about saudi arabia saudi arabia cricket lack of facilities they have that will to do well a good comeback so with that dot delivery over number 2 comes to an end hong kong china 17 for the loss of one it's really one of the reasons as well for me i i love the associate game there he is on on the right talking to his assistant coach and i think he'll have actually been invigorated by the challenge of saudi arabia because you think of the size of the country the scale of the country the potential we obviously know there's lots of things happening in other sports there as well it's a big fun but you think of 36 million people you think of of big cities in riyadh and in jeddah so he will have looked at it and he'll have said well this could be my second afghanistan and i i hope and i presume that the saudi arabian cricket board have very much given him carte blanche in terms of we know you can do this we don't want you for one year he's been in place 3 years now we want you for a decade a wayward delivery and easy picking for nazakat going past that fine leg and diving wicket keeper the f- start is over with a four runs ishtiaq 
knee is picking for nizakat yeah, no movement so he's just started on the wrong line and it stayed on that wrong line definitely is a yard of pace doesn't he i, I think atifa roman is even quicker in fact three bowlers up at excessive 130 kilometers an hour that saudi arabia have to work with some good spin options too big partnership this one for hong kong was there a chance put down by the fielder at point everything is happening now a direct hit at the non striker end survives nizakat well he's getting plotted it was a chance it wasn't an easy chance oh would have been a great catch wouldn't it might just be the top scorer trying to get a look as to who it was i wonder was it abdul wahid he got one hand on it but he's dropped hong kong's captain I keep going back to the field and it's so overlooked in t20 cricket it's so important oh indeed you need to be terrific in the field if you want to defend the total against the likes of anshuman ratni zakat and babar hayat a lucky escape for nizakat still out there in the middle created the chance not getting much support from the fielder onto the bats the line has been a bit wavered from ishtiaq is it because of right and left combination just one more look at this drop first mudasir look at this well, he's done probably all the hard work hasn't he sometimes in that kind of region in the gully they either stick or they don't and it was indeed abdul wahid batted so brilliantly but unable to hold on could that be costly to the chance of nizakat we all know if he stays he can get his team those big runs risky player but there's a protection in the deep i think they need to be very patient here the bowlers of saudi arabia trying out too many things is ishtiaq back off length onto the pads a bit wayward though he has got that wicket of yasin murtaza so far seven runs in this over couple of more deliveries left it's anshuman on strike it's a good partnership between these two pulling it away from anshuman rat if you talk about the bowling options the captain mohammed hisham sheikh he can bowl those uh, off break deliveries zainul abidin he'll be the key when we talk about the spin department of saudi arabia but as of now hong kong china they are looking for these two to build up a partnership nizakat has been put down on nine by abdul wahid now 18 runs between these two and the 178 runs needed of 103 balls so eight runs from his second over three overs done 25 for the loss of one well little tribute to our our men in the middle because they're often unsung heroes sometimes we only call them out when they're criticized but they've been in action today mudas have a look at this you don't need to be just good at your decision making you need to be swift on your feet oh mudas there's one what about this one up up you go over you go that's the nutmeg is it from a football perspective the boys have been on their toes credit to them in modern day cricket and everyone needs to be on their toes when you're out there in the field doing good job is a tariq rashid and abdul jabbar and ahmed raza will continue from far end nicely managed and put in the gap goes through the offside looking good is anshuman rat he's so elegant isn't he he really is he might disagree with me i don't think this is the strongest format 
I think he's a very fine ODI player. He, we saw him try to make it in, in first-class cricket in India in the Ranji Trophy too. Good Red Bull player too. But he can, if he's allowed to get in, he can accelerate in the T20 game too. Very different kind of player to Nizakat Khan or to Babar Hayat, who we'll see in next. They are textbook shots, like that cover drive. Beautiful stroke, gets his strike rate up above 100. You're chasing down over 200. I think you need a minimum of 50 plus in the power play. Really, you want 65. Good field placement. The captain of Saudi Arabia, and rightly said by the end of the power play, they need to go beyond that 50-55, but also need to make sure not to lose another wicket inside the power play. Nizakat has been dropped on nine. And that was a big moment. And Midasar, one thing I just want to try and get across to people is the scale or the potential scale of this win for Saudi Arabian cricket. They're still very early in their history. They played since 2019, but the last two years they've played more T20I cricket than ever. Beaten the likes of Bahrain, Bhutan, Cambodia, Indonesia, Iran, Japan, Kuwait, the Maldives, Qatar and Thailand. But with respect to them, this would be the biggest win in their history by a distance. If we look at the rankings, it would be a 10-gap upset. Saudi Arabia 31st in the world. They've got off to a good start. This could have made it even better if Abdul Wahid has held on. The drop you were just talking about. So 10 places separate these two on the ICC T20I rankings. But I think it's even bigger than that. It's a sign of maybe the trajectory of Saudi Arabian cricket on the whole. It's a sign of things to come. And one more thing, it would blow this Group A wide open. Cut hard, but straight towards the fielder. A fumble and a quick single has been taken by Nizaka and Anshuman. It will be a major boost for Saudi Arabia if they can defend this target of 202 against Hong Kong, China. Width offered, cut hard. Good job done by the fielder, Zainul Abidin. And we'll see him, I suspect, with his left arm spin as well. Fine bowler. Just love the conditioning. Look at the, the, the fitness of all these Saudi Arabian cricketers. Coming down the track, a bit fuller onto the pads and those risks comes into play of Nizakat Khan. So dealing in boundaries, looking good out there in the middle is the captain of Hong Kong, China. Well, he's brilliant wrist, isn't he? You nailed it there. Look at that, the flick. A lovely flourish in the follow through too. And nothing that Ishtiak can do out there at deep backward square. Just a couple of times, particularly for Hong Kong's power play, the line was, was very errant, wasn't it? And again, for Saudi Arabia here, even a few freebies away. This is a big over. Most expensive of the innings thus far. 11 off it already. Still one ball to come. He's using the feet. And straight towards that long off. So another expensive over from Ahmad Raza comes to an end. Four overs done. 37 for the loss of one. So we're day three. We're approaching the halfway stages of the competition. In fact, at the end of this game, it'll be the halfway stages of the group phase where there'll be 20 games between the 10 sides to work out the two semi-finalists. If Saudi Arabia win this, they've still got to play a lot of cricket to do that. Well, it's anyone's game, isn't it? In fact, really, it's going to be an out-and-out three-horse race for that second qualification spot. You'd think Nepal are probably looking pretty good. They'll only need to win one of their last two. I know one of those games will come up next against Hong Kong. Then they have to play Saudi Arabia, who they've never lost to. In fact, they've never played in a T20I. They went down into a heavy defeat in a 50-over game to the Himalayan nation. So it would be a three-horse race for me. I think Qatar are out of things. They won't think they are, but I think with that net run rate, they're in a spot of bother. They'd have to win their last two, and if other things go their way, there are a few permutations. You could have, actually, I think you could have a four-way tie, couldn't you, in second place with two wins apiece. Just depends how it all plays out. But one thing's for certain, if Saudi Arabia could take this biggest win in their history, it's all up for grabs for those semi-final spots, those all-important semi-final spots. Get to the semis, you're two games away from, who knows, India, Pakistan, and many more in the Asia Cup to come next year.
a change in the bowling and straight away a wayward delivery down the leg the keeper has been kept busy behind the stumps desperately looking to break this partnership the captain getting his experience fast bowler usman into the attack usman najib then the legs had really good glove work something we often forget about we just take it for granted he should take that that's gone a long way off the seam it was already angling down and it went further good tumbling acrobatic stop from the keeper abdul ali an interesting group nepal sitting pretty at the top of the table and they are the favorites to top this group 31 runs partnership of just 19 balls between Nizaka and Anshuman. Struggling, clearly struggling here. It's back to back whites. I called out the fielding has been potentially the the separating factor between these sides. I felt Hong Kong were really under par. Don't know what their head coach would judge them as. Maybe a four out of ten, three out of ten in that first innings. The other factor is the extras factor. You always want to keep that to as few as possible. Something Malaysia have done really well in their first two appearances. Just one extra conceded against Nepal, and I don't think it was many more against Saudi Arabia in their big win. Yesterday the bowlers did a pretty good job for Saudi Arabia but the batters let them down and today the batters doing a wonderful job posting the 202 now it's up to the bowlers to get those wickets Usman Najib into his first over getting those runs with ease is the nizakat and getting much needed support from the other end it's experience Anshuman Rath Oh brilliant delivery was there a chance I think one more time Nizakat has been put down by the fielder this time the wicket keeper behind the stumps Oh I don't know now often a telltale sign is the batter looking behind immediately I just wondered did his back come down and hit his back pad though Bowler thinks it was either way we're not certain might be one we'll have to ask the umpire at the end of play might have just taken a feather of an edge ah oh, and look at that the very next delivery a quick single has been taken well, often we have to depend upon the reactions and if you look at the batter i think he thought he edged it I think the bowler might have think he missed it because it wasn't an appeal it was a oh it's just missed the outside edge and then ultimately the keeper has dropped it it doesn't matter and the batter knows that there was an outside edge but a poor stuff from the wicket keeper not grabbing those opportunities you need to be sharp in the field uh, lucky lucky inside edge going past that fine leg chased by Khalid and valiant effort so runs are coming thick and fast for hong kong this time from the blade of anshuman well they've needed this run because there hasn't been much coming from this over could well have been a wicket we don't know was it an edge or not and this is what i'm talking about anshuman and rath this is the part of the game it doesn't quite come naturally to him it's a big slog isn't it i have to say well, the fielder should have stopped this he's dived too early he's almost face planted isn't he usman khalid he would have had time to run by it just flick it back in he's gone down too early there that's cost a couple more runs every run could count in this chase and Simon Rath gets a very fortunate boundary going to have a change in the field the manic gully is going to come out and bolster up the leg side they think Rath is going to try and make use of the last eight deliveries of the power play so he goes into mid wicket ah oh, look at that shot connects well and is sending usman najib out of the park with that maximum hong kong china gets to 50 inside the power play well, that's where you said we both said sorry that they needed to be at least 50 this one's out of the screws 
It's a pick-up pull shot. It's almost off the front foot, isn't it? Gets a very good piece of it, though. Just lifts it up high over the infield, and it soars away. It's a batter's paradise here at the Oman Cricket Academy, particularly the second ground. We've seen UAE post their record score. Saudi Arabia post the second highest in their history. Only the second time they've gone past 200, and Hong Kong want to chase it down. This pitched outside leg won't be given out to close out the fifth, so it'll be a leg by. An action packed over. Could well have had the second wicket. Instead, 14 runs come from it. It's 51 for one. For the first time, it will be spin, and it's Captain Hisham Sheikh. Goes on to the back foot, and easy picking. An ordinary stuff from Hisham Sheikh, and rightly punished by Anshuman Rath. Nothing going in favor of Saudi Arabia here. A yeah, real drag down to start with. You can see where the action is modeled on. Call it Narayan, call it Raza, whichever you want. It's funny, you watch Raza and you think of, he looks at the way he bowls. It's a bit innocuous, isn't it? It's, it's a bit of everything in there, some off breaks, some carom balls, one's flicked out the front, arm balls. And that's the one that's the little carom ball, isn't it? So Hisham Sheikh is being inspired there. They're going to run a second, really good running. Wheels just coming off a touch for Saudi Arabia. They need to get things back. They need to ideally find the second wicket. This partnership now worth 50. A running hard between the wickets. Extraordinary running between the wickets. Played with soft hands. And responding to the call is Anshuman Rath. And straight toward the fielder. And a couple of times he fumbled, but he's able to hold on to it. The danger man, Anshuman Rath, he departs, Hisham strikes in his first over. Well, he's juggled it like a bar of soap in the shower. It went into the air once, then twice, then thrice, once, twice, three times, there it is. Critically holds on, though. He's dropped one, which was much more difficult than that. And it was only in the fingertips, wasn't it? But he'll come out of that shower clean as a whistle because Anselm and Rath's gone for 29. And Hong Kong, China are 57 for two. Well, Babur Hyatt, Hong Kong's premier batter, particularly in this format. He's got a lot to do for his team. The required run rate is still in excess of 10 runs per over. A little mix-up. He won't get off the mark just yet. He comes to the crease just as that partnership had got to 50. And this could be a chance and gone. It's two in the over. It's the big one. Babar Hyatt falls now. Just as Mikhail Viswami comes to join me. 
What have Hong Kong done? They've lost two in three balls. Just get the impression they are throwing it away over here. Another long hop and he finds the field and the deep and what a good catch by Ishtiak. It was never going to be easy. I'll tell you what, two wickets in one over. Hong Kong are all over the place. Hayat departs without troubling the scorers. And Saudi Arabia right on top of Hong Kong, China. 57 for three. Isaac Khan in at number five. Well, Babar Hyatt, he's so critical to Hong Kong in everything they do. And I just wonder, did that, he should have had the single off the first ball. They turned it down. Gone from the next and the change of bowling by the skipper. Hisham Sheikh has worked. It's two in the over. And for me, it now means the power play belongs to Saudi Arabia. 57 for three, the score. Here's the two wickets and three balls. Yeah, fair to say, we just have to look at the deliveries also being bold, Andrew. I'm not too sure if it was the greatest of deliveries on offer. First one was short and wide, could have been hit anyway. We'll take a look at those two dismissals. Hisham Sheikh, successful first over for him. Always comes out there and breaks partnerships. He got uh, two very big wickets of two very big batters. First one, Anshuman Rats. Look at that, short and wide. Makes room for himself, finds the field, a little bit of a juggle, but... Of a long hop, he gets a wicket. The next delivery, a couple of deliveries later, again another short delivery. It could have been deposited anyway. He finds the field, Aishtiak. Mikhail, those two deliveries remind me so much of my career. The problem was mine went over the rope the majority of the time. I'd have had none for 12 from those two balls. He's got two and three. It's a funny old game. Maybe you didn't bowl to one, Shiman Ratan, but where I had <laughs> Andrew. Oh, they'd have cashed in, I'll tell you. Spin from both ends now. Zayn al Abedain will come on. He's a very good left-arm spinner and he's got his dream scenario. He's bowling to two right-handers. will be turning the ball away. They won't get the overthrow. Good alertness from al Abedin. And I think right now, Mikhail, you're looking at a situation where unless something changes drastically, Saudi Arabia, they're staring at history. Well, Hong Kong, China have themselves to blame. Let's take a look at this fielding effort in the deep. They've put themselves in a spot of bother. They're looking so good cruising at one stage. As of now, it looks like Hong Kong will have to rebuild. Nice little curve in from the left arm spinner coming quite wide of the crease. Big challenge now for Hong Kong. It's not just the fact they've lost those two wickets. It's that they can't really allow a fallow period here in these overs 7 to 11, which there often is. Because if they only go, let's say, at sixes or sevens per over here, even if they don't lose a wicket, that would only get them up to 85 at the end of the 10th, not even 83, 84. And then all of a sudden, it's 12 and over from there, and two a ball plus, it's never easy. Absolutely, and the passage of play in the last two wickets, an interesting sight was the reaction of Captain Nizakat Khan at the other end, Andrew. He was telling Anshuman Rath, you could have hit it any way you found the field, and when Babar Hayat got out, all he could do is just look down in despair. And all of a sudden, Saudi Arabia looked very, very confident, spring in their feet, you can certainly get the feeling that they'll be a little chirpy as well now.
Hit down towards Long on, and he holds on. Well, he didn't judge it particularly well, but look at that. It's a warrior stare from the big man, from Faisal Khan. It's a historic day for him. A thousand T20i runs to his name. The first Saudi Arabian batter to do it. And now he holds the catch and he holds the pose. What a catch. And what a performance here by Saudi Arabia as well. Faisal Khan coming in slow and then after that he puts in the dive. The swag, the style and look at the stance as well. This is how you take catches he says. And I'll tell you what, Hong Kong, China are falling apart in this chase. Mohamed Ezaz Khan throws it away too. He walks back for two and four. It's 62 for four in seven overs. Well, 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 have we got a game in our hands or what here? Saudi Arabia really just need to hold their nerves. Do the basics right for the next hour for 13 overs of cricket. And you've got a win for the ages. We felt it's been coming. Get one more look at this catch. I think he's misjudged this at first. It's ended up looking good, but he didn't make it initially a good movement towards it. That's a very good observation, Andrew. Just felt that he had covered it first early, then realised he has to get in closer. And by the end of it, he says, I've taken it, gentlemen. Relax. We've done it. Wicket number four, pocket it. Look at that, Faisal Khan. That's some pose. Smile, Faisal. You've taken the catch. You've not put it down. Oh, dear. That's not a good delivery. I think it's the attempted googly out of the back of the hand. We'll get another look at it. It's a bit of everything. Licorice all sorts we're getting from... Hisham Sheikh, the captain, and result to be four runs. Quite a few mountains around this region, but looks like Hong Kong, China is climbing the tallest mountain. Yeah, back of the hand delivery, the googly, not quite executing it well. Gets a thickish outside edge. Welcome runs here for Hong Kong, China. You often wonder about this. I've spoken to Sikandar Raza about it before. I said, if you're an off spinner, well, why do you want to bowl a googly as well? Because it's going to turn the same way. What he said to me, it fascinated me, he said the trajectory is completely different, and he's right. There's a very glum-looking Hong Kong bench right now. You can understand why. So what Sikander told me was that his off-break... Yeah, they don't look happy, do they? So your off-break, hopefully you can see us up here, your off-break will come out sort of out of the front of the hand, but then your googly will come out out of the back. So naturally, the trajectory initially from the googly, it will be up, whereas generally, you just open the door, don't you, with an off-break, it comes out flatter. And even though it's turning the same way, that's why he likes to go with both of those variations. And maybe that's where the mystery element also comes in, uh, Andrew, because you just add a little bit of more variation, so you become the mystery spinner. Eight gone, it's 71 for four. You're spot on, but it's fascinating, isn't it? They both turn the same way. They might turn a very similar amount, although depending upon the kind of mystery spinner you are, your googly, some turn it a long, long way. You think of a, a sort of a Brad Hogg. I know he was a left arm wrist spinner. His googly had turned more than his leg break. The opposite was Shane Warren. Shane Warren ragged his leg break, his googly barely went. How much did Andrew's googly turn? I would like to know oh, that. Oh, <laughs> it went miles <laughs> if it landed. That was the problem. <laughs> it was never easy. But if you get that mystery, your leg break's coming out the front, your googly's coming out the back, your top spinner's coming over the top. 
Oh, it's my favorite thing in the sport, the mystery, the majesty, the magic of Rispin. And the suspense as well that comes with it. Thanks for that insight. I quite certainly would like to face you someday, Andrew. <laughs> Well, on the full, rather. We've got a day off, don't we? Yeah, we do. We have one day off. <laughs> right. We'd have to speak to... What's our brilliant groundsman's name again? Anoop. Anoop. Yes. Do you think Anoop can put a little training wicket out for us? Quite certainly. I'm getting my willow ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a challenge. You've got six balls to survive, Mikhail. I, give me 12 and I'll do it. Well, there's no chance you're surviving 12. <laughs> no way you're surviving 12. I was an opener. I was more of a new ball batter. Oh, so let's you? keep it at that. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Six <laughs> balls, mate. You survive. <laughs> I owe you a beer. Okay, back to the action. We've just got a slight break in play here with what? I think the keeper just needed a new set of pads. Don't think it's a change in wicket keeper. It's still Abdul Ali. I think he just had a problem with his pad. So he's all set to go. So we talk all things spin bowling up here in the commentary box. 12 overs remain. The required run rate is well in excess now of 10 runs per over. Two or three good overs here, Mikhail. That will go in excess of 12. And no matter what team you are, an IPL side, a power-packed West Indian T20 team, it doesn't matter when it goes above 12 runs per over. You have to play incredibly well, particularly over an elongated period, to win the game. Especially when you've lost four wickets already up front. And that to your top four, that's going to add as massive pressure. And it'll mount with every dot delivery as well. And this is now the challenge. Stick or twist? Do you take wrist against, risk against what will be... In general, left arm spinners are pretty accurate. Zain al Abedin is no different. Or do you just knock it around for five or six and over, and then that required run rate starts to almost choke you to death? There's no freebies coming. Oh, it's a catch-22 situation here for Hong Kong, China. They don't have wickets in hand at the same time. They need to stay. They need to score and accelerate as well. And I, I just get the impression with the body language that Nizakat Khan has been looking out for the bigots. So this could be an opportunity once again for Saudi Arabia to just about make another inroad because Nizakat Khan is not going to allow the Saudi bowlers to dominate. This is the challenge. This over, if there's not two boundaries remaining from it, it goes to Saudi Arabia. They'd be delighted with overs going for six or seven. If they can get one to go for three or four, well, it's a big win. Just keep your eyes on those graphics. That required run rate continues to escalate. Really good bowling. Very accurate. Well, yes, and not much uh, Hong Kong China can do at this stage if the bowling is as accurate as uh, Zeno Abedin's line and length. You feel sorry for the captain, Zakat Khan. He's seen things just perish at the other end. He's been helpless. He's lacked support. Zishan Ali relatively new as well in the middle. I think one of the challenges for, for Hong Kong as well, they've got a reasonably long tail to come. You look at Rauna Kapoor, he's very much just a bowler. You think of Danaja Rao, equally the same, Isan Khan, he's a great cricketer, but he's not much of a batter. It's the end of the ninth, 75 for four, the score. I'm trying to work out who it might be in next. It'll probably be Nasrul Arana. He's got a career best of, of 36. So right now, I'm not sure if they've got much to come. Shukla can hit a few, but again, he's a he's a lower order hitter rather than a, a batter. So unless these two can put on a massive partnership, I think for Hong Kong to chase this down, Nizakat might need to get 80 plus individually. Andrew, partnership is one thing, but partnership at a brisk rate is another part to it. They need to get it at a very quick pace. And with slow bowlers in operation and uh, six wickets in hand, the mix of caution and aggression will be something that they'll need to make note of. And this for me, mate, in addition, is where you'd question the team selection. Martin Coetzee left out. Fine player at the top of the order. They've gone with the, the five bowlers. They really backed those five bowlers and the six batters up the top to do it. 
quick single's going to be dashed. I wonder, was there a little bit of underestimation of the opposition here today from Hong Kong? They've got themselves in a tangle. They're going to need to play incredibly well in the second half of this chase, even to get close. Also, Andrew is winning the toss. Uh, a winning mantra out here. Win, toss, bat first. Yeah, certainly it's been all Saudi Arabia. If you're just tuning in and join the telecast on the Asian Cricket Council's YouTube channel or Fan Code in India, very good afternoon, early good evening to you there. In Nepal on, on television, on Kantapur TV, warm welcome along. You would think that the favourite side is the men in green. Ten places separate these two in the T20I rankings. I think we're in the midst of seeing a massive upset, the biggest of this tournament so far. Indeed, the way it's going right now at 80 for four, chasing 202, quite clearly. Another single, so six singles to end the over. It's been a quiet one for Hong Kong, China. It's 81 for four at the halfway stage and a quick water break as well for both the teams. So what a break for the teams and uh, we'll quickly take a look at the fall of wickets as well. Hong Kong China lost the early wicket here, very early. In fact, in the first over, Istiak striking and that's when they put the chasing team on the back foot. And just when things were looking good, a little bit of a wobble, one, two and three, but Abdul Wahid caught the catch of Anshuman Rath was looking so good. Hisham Sheikh, two wickets in and over and then two balls later, it was Babar Hayat who departed as well, finding Istiak in the deep. And uh, this was the fourth wicket to fall. A very good catch by Faisal Khan. And uh, clearly Saudi Arabia celebrating right on top. And that pose as well suggested the mood in the middle as well for Saudi Arabia. It's been uh, one-way traffic with bat and ball. And Saudi have been calling the shots in the middle. 81 for four. So here we go, Hong Kong, one from one, to make it two from two, you're going to need something special from Nizakat Khan, the skipper, Zishan Ali there alongside him, Saudi in control. And the big question is, as that finish line comes into view for Saudi Arabia, I think now it's just a case of whether or not they can hold their nerve, they're well, in, well ahead of the game for me, the required run rate over two runs per delivery. 121 and 59. This will call for a special effort from the Hong Kong China batters. Nizakat Khan, 1326. Another tickle down the leg side, maybe signal leg bias as well. Or did he get some bad in it? Not really. Yes, leg bias signaled. Well, things have gone quiet. 
at uh, turf two. And the lights as well have just about been switched on. Remember, it's been overcast, gloomy conditions out here. You're spot on. It's gone very quiet indeed, isn't it? And the quieter it is, the, the happier that Saudi Arabia will be. It hasn't been a boundary for a long time. I think the last one was in the eighth over. Yeah, second ball of the eighth over. Some of our volunteers there helping to pull it together this ACC Men's Premier Cup. And every over that goes by without a boundary, let alone two boundaries, Mikhail, that over belongs to Saudi Arabia. Well, they're in the driver's seat at this stage. You just try to understand their approach from here on for Hong Kong, China. Who becomes the aggressor? Nizakat or Zishan Ali? Somebody has to take matters into his own hands and just about bring back that momentum. At this stage, it's Saudi Arabia all the way. Wonderfully bowled by Zainul Abedin. Nizakat one strike. A dot delivery. Only four runs coming in this over so far. They need much more than this. Multiplied three times and that's what they'll be needing it. Unsure with his batting at this stage. Zishan just not been able to pick the length. Zainul Abedin, great numbers for him. Finally, a bit of innovation. Still not going to bring the boundary, though. Right now, Hong Kong are going nowhere. The partnership, 24 off 24. Not enough. 11 bold, 86 for four. Picked up into the leg side. Again, no real time in a rhythm. They will get a couple, but twos just aren't enough. I'll tell you something that Saudi Arabia are doing well as well here. They are flying through the overs. They know they're on top. The captain's driving that. We've got that stop clock in operation where you have to bowl your next over within 60 seconds. They did it within 30 there. Ones and twos, not good enough. And every over that goes by, remember the last boundary was the second ball of the eighth over. Every over without a boundary. It's heading heavily towards KSA. That's the fuller delivery, just darted in, giving us a leg by. I wonder is, is Nizakat Khan somewhat handcuffed by the fact that he knows he doesn't have much batting to come. Really don't know how they'll line up. Numbers seven through 11. It's five bowlers really out and out. Probably be Rana. Is this the boundary? It is. Gets it straight enough, gets four. Thought long off, might have been able to do a little better at that. Waji couldn't get across in time. It just accelerated over. Those Daffa News advertising mats you always get good reward hitting straight. You'll see it here. Look, it speeds up across them. And long off just wasn't able to cut it off. Could be an action again. Can he get to this one? No, he can't. Finally, something for Hong Kong to cheer. Bang, bang, back to back boundaries. And the 100 comes up in the 12th over. Is the chase now on? The required run rate, Mikhail, had gone above 13. And there it is, four and now six. Hisham has questions to answer for the first time.
Goes Ariel once again. I'm not quite sure he's milled it. Long off coming underneath it. Oh, it's been put down. Is this a big moment in the game? Nizakat Khan gets a life. Waji just feeling a little dejected and letting that go. But what a moment here. I tell you, it's a massive moment in the game. I think he should have cut off the first boundary. It's the little carom ball or the leg break, the leg cutter, whichever way you want to look at it. He's done all the hard work. You have to hold on. It's a dolly, to be honest. Yes, he needed to run 20 yards to get there. But you have to take that catch, particularly because of the fact it was Nizakat Khan. And all of a sudden, we now have a game in our hands. One oh three for four, the score after 12. Finally, some acceleration. The biggest over the innings, to be honest. Hisham shakes figures. They flatter him a touch. There is a bit of everything in there. Now the final over of the left arm spinner. And he's going to get a wicket down the track. Zishan gives it away. Look at Nizakat Khan's reaction. The captain, he's running out of partners. It's been a procession at the other end. Good reward for a great spell of left arm spin bowling here. And that reaction summed it up. Poor shot. No way close to the ball. Playing across the line. The arm delivery comes in handy. Wicket number five for Hong Kong, China. And look at Nizakat Khan's reaction. All he was trying to tell his partner, stay with me, give me support. He walks back without contributing much to that scoreboard. He scores 18 and 17. It's 1-0-3 for 5. So it is Nasrul Arana at number seven. Big challenge for Hong Kong. It's four out and out bowlers after this. Honestly, no idea where numbers eight through 11 will line up. Well, this is nicely cut away. Good diving stop in the deep will keep it to a couple to allow Nasrullah to get off the mark in some style. You think Nizakat to chase this down. Nizakat can, may need 100. More than that, he needs support from the remaining five. <laughs> the way the other batters have batted around him has just left him a little dejected. He's uh, the lone man standing, stranded today at the other end. Oh, wrapped on the pads, maybe just going down leg. Good decision there by Abdul Jabbar. Even Zainal Abedin admits that yes, they may have just gone down the leg side. I tell you, this is a good decision because he could have been deceived here as an umpire. Look after the impact on the back pad. Look at where the he then goes further down. So he just easily could have been deceived and thought the impact was further in line. Got to just miss leg stump. Didn't turn enough. Oh, now this one could be gone. It's kept a little low. Nizakat thinks it's missing leg. He remonstrates firstly with the umpire, then with his teammate. Saudi Arabia, they've got six. Oh, they're on the brink of something very special here in Oman. He may have just played the wrong length as well. Nasrullah Rana should have gone forward to it. Goes back, keeps low, skids on. And Zainul takes off and the finger goes up. And look at Nizakat Khan. Had a word or two to share to the batter. Walking back, Nasrullah Rana departs for two. It's 105 for six.
Now, here's the challenge. Well, he might have a little bit of altitude fever up here. He's at number eight. Isan Khan, he's a brilliant bowler, but he's not renowned for his batting. This is what happens when you pick really four out-and-out -out bowlers and the one all-rounder. You've got a very long tail. The required run rate is the best part of 14 runs per over. Zain al Abidin, he might not get the player of the match, but he's been a big factor in Saudi Arabia's dominance. And he's going to finish with four overs, three for 16, outstanding bowling. Really good spell of left arm spin bowling. And Saudi Arabia, all they need to do is hold their nerve and they're about to round out what, for me, is the biggest win in their cricketing history. Nazakat Khan opening the innings there for Hong Kong China has watched six wickets fall right in front of him from the non-striker's end. Well, that's been the story for Hong Kong China in this chase. They've capitulated, the top order particularly. A tidy, disciplined bowling effort by Saudi Arabia. Hassan Khan got three wickets in Saudi Arabia's innings, all of them coming in the last over. Remains to be seen how much of support can he give his captain. He's just walked out. Short and wide. Still to get off the mark. The dot ball percentage. Giving Saudi Arabia the edge. Usman Khalid introduced has begun well. A lot of spin options here for Saudi Arabia. And what a match they are having. Missed out yesterday. I made a 360 turn today. Off the mark, beg your pardon, it's the second round for Ishan Khan, brings Nizakat on strike and I'll tell you what, this is going to be the moment, the deciding over at least for Nizakat Khan as to what his approach is going to be like, just the right time to introduce Mudassar Ali Qureshi as well in the comp box. Mudassar, tough times here for Hong Kong China. Uh, tough times for Hong Kong China and what a moment for men in green. They batted well. Bowlers doing pretty good job, though they were a bit sluggish in the field. Couple of chances put down, but this man, Nizakat, holds the key for Hong Kong China. 107 for the loss of six. Firmly hit down the ground, chased by the fielder. What an effort! What an effort! Saving a couple of runs. He certainly saved a couple of runs there by Vaji Al Hassan. Brilliant diving effort. And this is what you want from your fielders. It just lifts the bowler as well. You've got to back your bowlers. Look at that, a certain four. And that's been cut off. You need those kind of efforts if you want to win such games against the quality side, like Hong Kong, China. Full mark should be given to Wajul Hassan. And also, the way Hisham Sheikh is leading this pack Full mark should be given to Hisham. He has been very calm and composed. Nizakat has been dropped a couple of times. The good news for Saudi Arabia, they were able to get the top order, Anshuman Rath, Babar Hayat, Murtuza back in the hut. Now it all depends on Nizakat. Inside edge. What an over. Just three runs, keeping things tight is Usman Khalid. 14 done, it's 109 for the loss of six. That batting card does not exude much confidence. Hong Kong, China just about throwing it away. Once Babur Hayat 
and Anshuman Rudd departed. It was always going to be an uphill task here in this mammoth chase, steep chase of 202. Hong Kong, China are a much better side than what these numbers show on their batting card. Babur Hayat didn't last much, only two deliveries. Anshuman Rath had set himself up for a big score, was out to an ordinary delivery, found the fielder while trying to cut. And Nizakat Khan fighting a lone battle. In all of it, Saudi Arabia have stood up, stood tall and stood out this afternoon. Mudassar. A single and the way they came back after losing that game against Malaysia clearly shows the caliber and the will to do well. The men in green in a strong position. Some late swing there, Mudassar. Very good start by Usman Najib. Usman Najib from Pakistan, and you know the Pakistan fast bowlers. They know the art of reverse swing. Back of length. He has been busy. Faisal Khan at that long on position. Already taken a terrific catch to get rid of Babar Hayat. Great recovery and release by Faisal Khan. In the thick of things, provided much needed runs with the bat. Took a spectacular catch in the deep and once again, just showing his agility in the middle as well. Impressive, if we talk about the fielding standards at the right time, they're putting that efforts, changing the field, taking his own time. The short third man has pushed onto the ropes. Deep square leg come inside the 30-yard circle. So the line should be towards the top stump. Down the leg side, nicely done. Good keeping there. That will certainly go on for a couple of more runs. Abdul Manan Ali, he batted brilliantly, getting 44 runs. Three sixes in that innings and now behind the stumps as well, he's showing great athleticism. Look at that. Talking about the effort throughout this innings from the boys of Saudi Arabia. Yet again, this time it was wicketkeeper saving some runs. But an ordinary piece of bowling, you have a very tight and plenty of coverage on the offside and Lucky escape on the previous delivery for Usman Najib. On to the pads and no mistake from Nizakat Khan. Flick of the wrist and much needed boundary. Poor delivery. He's been guilty of just being wavered in, in the spell of his. Couple of deliveries down the leg and this time fuller down the leg side. All he had to do was get past the fielder at square leg and it was always going to be for raced away. Much needed boundary for Nizakat Khan. Still persisting with the same field. I think it's better for Hisham to make a few adjustments, get that third man inside the 30 yard circle, push that square leg onto the ropes. One more time onto the pads. A quick single has been taken. So, with that single, a fighting knock, 50 comes up for Nizakat Khan. Well, there's not much to celebrate in this 50, and that's why I'm don't, I don't think so. He'll be raising his bat as well. Because the way things have panned out for Hong Kong China in this chase has just left him a little baffled and disappointed too. He wants support, he wants his batters to show my accountability. He's fighting a lone battle, but well played, Nizakat. Captain's innings, a gritty one. A wild swing, a big mistake. Hassan Khan wanted to go big, misses the line completely. Usman strikes for the first time in this game. Another poor shot selection, playing across the line. All he had to do was just about rotate the strike, take a single and get to the other end, but he was looking for the big six. Nizakat Khan, the captain at the other end, has seen wickets fall in a heap and it's been a procession. Another wicket falls. Ehsan Khan departs for three and eight. It's 117 for seven.
everything going in favor of Saudi Arabia winning the toss made a right decision to bat they posted 202 now the bowlers doing a pretty good job 117 Hong Kong they have lost seven wickets last 30 balls 86 needed lone warrior Nazakat Khan still out there in the middle and in comes Ishtiaq Ahmed Excellent, excellent delivery and can they create an upset here in a strong position? They have dropped Nizakat Khan a couple of times which helped him to get to his 50 of 37 balls and joining him is Dhananjay Rao, not much known for his batting skills. Making room, thick outside edge, and look at that effort. Throughout the day, we have witnessed some brilliant piece of fielding display from Men in Green. Yet again, this time, Usman Najib saving some runs for his team. He's just pulled a wicket taking over, and after that, deployed at third. Look at that for an effort for a pace bowler. Brilliant. The commitment levels of Saudi Arabia need special mention this afternoon. Lost their game yesterday. They won the pressure to put up a good performance today. And they've come out really strong. Sensing a chance to open their account in this tournament. Better. Much better of the... Sir Rona Kapoor, the new batter. Because throughout Asian Cricket Council tournaments, we have witnessed the teams like Saudi Arabia, Qatar doing a pretty good job. And it will be interesting to see the way the team stands after day three. Nizakat, he needs to get a couple of maxims in this over. Nicely bowled, back of length, change of pace, just a single. Singles won't hurt Saudi Arabia. How quick is Faisal Khan in the deep? Got around it and released it as well. Now this Group A is turning out to be a very interesting scenario. And I'll tell you why, Mudassir. A win for Saudi Arabia, a good win over here will boost their net run rate as well. And Hong Kong China, who are sitting pretty right now, may just have to go a notch lower if they lose by a heavy margin. This means that three teams with even games will be on same points and will boil down to the net run rates. Oh, absolutely and interesting points table in Group A. Keeping in mind Nepal. They are in a good position winning their games. Eighteen runs a wicket to his name. A decent over. Five balls, four runs. Never praise the bowler. The commentator curse comes into play. A wayward delivery, way outside the off stump. A good call made by Tariq Rashid. A day to remember for men in green. Batted well. Now the bowlers respond to the call of the captain. Defending the target of 202 mm. A total has been posted. So just six runs from that over of Ishtiaq. It's look quite difficult for Hong Kong, China. 16 overs done, 123 for the loss of seven.
16 overs, 123 for the loss of seven, and look at that required run rate, 20. Lone Hope Nizakat, he's also struggling out there in the middle, not able to find those maximums. A bit expensive, but he has got that wicket in the previous over. Usman Najib will continue. On to the pads. What a story if we talk about Saudi Arabia cricket. It's always important to have right people the right job. This is what we have witnessed if we talk about the progress of Saudi Arabia. And the board also backing the likes of Kabir Khan, trusting his abilities. In the air, connects well and out of the park. A much needed maximum from the blade of Nizakat. And did I see Andrew do the retrieving part as well in the process? What a shot here by Nizakat Khan, the lone man standing. The team has fallen apart, but he continues to fight on. Nicely flicked and chips that over mid-wicket. Bowled into the pads. He's just raising unlikely hope at this stage. 59 and 42 and the rest of the other batters just about betrayed him in the middle. <laughs> The rescue ranger, Nizakat. Just a single, a good comeback from Usman Najib. Especially if you talk about associate cricket, it's always important to have that right man, the head coach. As we have seen, Monty sir doing a pretty good job with the Nepal. Now, Kabir Khan motivating these young boys and passionate cricketers. 73 of 21 balls. A quicker delivery. Day to remember for Saudi Arabia cricket. A good comeback after that heartbreak loss against Malaysia. No, just coming to that, uh, Mudasu, not easy to come back, especially when you're playing a top side like Hong Kong, China, who put up a very good performance against Qatar. But it was a good toss to win. It'll be interesting to know what's the record in this tournament for the teams batting first. Most of the teams have been successful. Punch towards cover. This could be a direct hit chance and they just about make it. Shahid the stumps, missing that completely. So far, if I'm not wrong, only once the team batting second went on to win the game on this particular venue against Kuwait, UAE went on to chase 178. The highest total so far in this tournament is posted by UAE, 230 odd runs. It's a batting paradise. But again, as a batting team, you need to apply on these surfaces. Not able to get the support from the other end, Nizakat. Wayward, wayward. They came out with a plan, Mikhail, during the toss. Hisham, straight away, he said they want to bat first because he knows that he has the strength in the bowling department. If even if they can post 170, he thought they could defend the target. Oh yes, and at the toss he did mention that they're looking at something close to 170, 180. They got to 202, which means they exceeded the expectations. All thanks to the middle order blitz, particularly the captain himself coming in very handy as well with the bat. And once they got to 202, I'm sure, at the halfway stage in the dugout, they would have certainly chanced themselves for a win over here. And this has been a super effort by them. Inside edge. Going for a maximum, the second delivery of this over, but good comeback. Giving away 10 runs in his third over. Nizakat trying his best on 61 of 44, Ronak on 3. Hong Kong, China still needs 70 runs in just 18 balls. And 
look at the draft they started off really well in this stage though they have lost that early wicket in the very first over of murtaza then it was a brilliant partnership between rat and nizakat khan the two quick wickets going down rats and babar hayat denting the hopes of hong kong china ishtiaq will continue played inside out towards that backward deep point ball racing towards the fence starts the over with the boundary a good looking shot now he'll be targeting ishtiaq ahmed bit fuller ample of time just opening the face of the blade played away from the field at the boundary rope so starts though with the boundary the required run rate 23.29 nizakat moves to 65 with the boundary 137 for the loss of 7 just cannot leak the runs they also need to make sure saudi arabia to better than net run rate here makes room for himself and plays that towards the cover sweeper region they'll have to settle for one desperation in the middle here for captain nizakat khan some support and ronak in the 18th over they are 138 for 7 this battle any which way is still tilted in favor of saudi arabia it all depends on how much hong kong china can muster up in this final few deliveries and nizakat needs to make sure to at least get another 30 40 runs an experienced captain he knows the importance of net run rate it's straight towards the bowler direct hit yes and no between these two batters are we going upstairs yeah it looks like ishtiaq's body language suggested that he may have just inflicted a run out but ronak seems to be calm This has to be referred up. We'll have to wait for a confirmation. Good to see Abdul Wahid and Nizak are just about uh, exchanging a smile and fist punch between them. Saudi Arabia, what a side they are today! In fact, all through the Asian Associate tournaments, they've always put up a good performance. This will be an interesting one. Oh, looks like it's going to be out. Oh, what a run out this is! Brilliant. Ten points to the bowler Ishtiaq. Ronak has been found short of his crease a direct hit means another wicket falls and this is wicket number 8 in favor of Saudi Arabia smart thinking from Ishtiaq Ahmed so the only thing which was missing in the second innings a run out played straight towards the bowler and smart piece of thinking from the bowler himself caught short of ground a slow walk by Ronak Kapoor adding just three runs they have lost their eighth man 138 on board uh, not often you see these kind of dismissals but look at ishtiaq's presence of mind ronak in fact thought he had made his ground and was looking for a run on the ricochet but ishtiaq was pretty certain that somewhere he had inflicted a run out and that's how saudi have played their cricket today and that run out pretty much sums up hong kong china's day in the middle today nothing has gone their way it quite ordinary in the first inning the bowlers leaking plenty of runs and in comes shukla 138 for the loss of 8 straight away off the mark mikhail but they also need to keep an eye on the net run rate and someone needs to pass on the message to the boys they cannot leak runs here i'll tell you what the team meeting post this performance by hong kong china will be a lot of introspection because uh, a few questions will certainly asked about the accountability the shot selection the maturity so many senior players I mean, this is a big tournament. You want to be part of the 2025 Asia Cup. You want to put up a good effort with the bat. You've done well in the previous game. You have a good chance of going on top of the points table. 
takes an outside edge and goes for a four. Nizakat Khan gets to 70 in the process and Hong Kong China gets to 143. A lucky runs, thick outside edge, going past the diving wicket keeper Abdul Mannan. A quicker delivery. So four runs for Nizakat and more runs for Hong Kong China. Last time they qualified for Asia Cup, it was way back in 2018. They went on to defeat UAE in that final. The final ball of his spell. A low full toss, easily managed. It's a good spell from Ishtiak Ahmed. Comes to an end, 4 overs, 31, a wicket to his name, 18 overs done, 144 for the loss of 8. Poor, poor stuff from Usman. The story remains the same for this fast bowler. Pulling a bit fuller but wayward. An extra run has been conceded. What a day it's been. Overnight rains, incessant morning rains, a rain curtailed first game. And then after that, Saudi Arabia creating one of the biggest upsets in this tournament. Almost there. And in all of it, as many as 500 runs scored across two games on the surface. What a delivery. Not take that single Nizakat. He wants to keep the strike. Quite interestingly, still he's persisting with the third man. There's no protection at the deep mid-wicket. He has got the short mid-wicket. Set a 30-yard circle for Nizakat. He's very strong onto the pads. No long off. Anything fuller, he will go over that mid off fielder. A wild swing, running hard the first run. Excellent running between the wickets. Uh, yes, Nizakat Khan has played a very fine innings. And as a captain, he's uh, put out a statement to his boys as well. Is that in a chase like this, you need to show in more application and crease occupation at the same time and put a price on your wicket. Some batters of Hong Kong China were guilty of throwing it away. And for a quality side like them, you know, they'll really reflect on this loss as uh, a big one in a competition like this. Faisal Khan comes into play and at last, they have got Nizakat Khan, the last hope for Hong Kong China, the captain departs well he can only walk with his head held high however it's going to be a lonely walk back in the slot didn't quite get underneath that one Faisal Khan with a very good catch he's a safe pair of hands a very agile fielder well played captain Nizakat Khan a lone battle he's livid with himself but what an inning 73 of 51 the lone man standing seven fours and two sixes and I'm sure the message there is to play out the 20 overs and not get all out. It's 147 for 9. Dhananjay makes his way to the mill. Well, two new batters, the last wicket, 
and Saudi Arabia are on the brink of creating an upset and just about adding something very special to their fleet of performances that came in sharply, tentative. I'm sure while walking in, he had a chat with the captain walking out and the message would have been to Dhananjay just about hang around and play the remaining seven deliveries. The last wicket here for Hong Kong, China, Dhananjay Rao. Couple of wickets for Usman Najib so far in his spell. And he cleans him up. So the boys from the Desert Dunes created a history here in Oman Cricket Academy for the first time in the history of T20 cricket. They went on to defeat Hong Kong, China. A big, big victory for Saudi Arabia. It's a David versus Goliath story over here. Ten places below Hong Kong, China. Saudi Arabia have pulled off a heist this evening. What a win. A win that will certainly give them a lot of confidence. This has been a cohesive team effort. The batters stood up. The bowlers showed up. And the fielders as well stood out. It is an absolutely clinical effort as the teams exchange handshakes. This is the men in green who have done something very special and spectacular. On day three, match number ten in turf two. In the ACC Men's Premier Cup. This is the final wicket. Dhananjay cleaned up by Usman. A lovely Yorker right underneath the bat. And that's been the icing on the cake. What a victory. They posted a good total and the bowlers are doing a pretty good job. At last, Hong Kong, China. The bundle out in 18.50 was managing just 147. So wide open now this group A. A big upset in this tournament. Hong Kong, China who are favourites coming into this game. They have lost the toss. And Hisham men posted a mammoth total. And in reply they could just manage 147. The only positive if you talk about the batting of Hong Kong, China. It was in Izakat Khan's brilliant 73. But he did not got the support from the other end. The likes of Babar Hayat without troubling the scorers. He was back in the hut. Couple of runs for Azaz Khan. Zishan managed 18. Anshuman Rath managing 29. And two extras have been conceded by Saudi Arabia. And they managed to get those 10 wickets in 18.5 overs. And Hong Kong, China were able to manage just 147 runs. Oh, it's been a uh, capitulation here for... Hong Kong, China, Saudi Arabia with the bat, with the ball have been impressive. Two bowlers fetch three wickets. Usman Najib, three for 33. Zainul Abidin, the pick of the bowlers. The left arm orthodox, three for 16. Hisham Sheikh got two wickets in the very first over and big ones of Babar Hayat and uh, Anshuman Rath. A wicket for Ishtiak Ahmed as well. And it's been a story where Saudi Arabia have d dominated with bat ball and in the field as well. What an effort. Very early in the innings, they got at the score of 7, the first wicket. Then two quick wickets on 57 and that meant that Hong Kong, China were always playing catch-up in this chase. So the news from Turf 2 here at the Oman Cricket Academy in Pool A fixture is that Saudi Arabia have secured their first two. And we'll take a look at the highlights. Here, the first wicket came sometime after this boundary. It was Ishtiak. Nice flick towards square leg. And just when they tried to play similar kind of cricket, they were wrapped on the pads. That was the first wicket to fall. And that's when Saudi Arabia decided to make inroads. However, Nizakat Khan and Anshuman Rath decided to play aggressive brand of cricket and made full use of the field restrictions. Some desperate dives and good commitment shown by Saudi Arabian fielders as well. And it was Anshuman Rath who decided to take things into his own hands before he was caught by Abdul Wahid. At covers, not a great delivery, but he holed out. Immediately a ball later, it was Babar Hayat who found Ishtiak in the deep as Hisham accounted for two wickets in one over. And they were able to get the wickets at the regular intervals and an excellent catch taken by Faisal. And the runs continues to come from the blade of Nizakat Khan. He tried his best, but could not able to get the support from the other end. Zishan, shimmy down the track, misses the line completely. And this was an easy decision, caught right in front of the wicket. The bowler is doing a pretty good job and full marks should be given to Hisham Sheikh. The way he utilizes his bowlers, especially Ishtiak, he bowled quite well with the new ball as well as in the death overs. 
an excellent fielding work from the bowler himself getting rid of Kapoor and this was the fall of Nizakat yet again no mistake from Faisal and this was the last wicket and couple of points in their kitty Saudi Arabia created a history here defeating Hong Kong China for the first time in T20 format and let's see how this match panned out winning the toss and opting to bat first the batters doing a pretty good job Yet again, it was Mr. Dependable Abdul Wahid getting 77 of 51 and got that much needed support from Faisal Khan who managed 30 of 24. And Abdul Mannan Ali, he was brilliant in the first innings with the bat. A quick 44 of just 18 and Hisham Sheikh also got 22 runs in just 10 balls and bowlers going for plenty of runs. Ahsan Khan though he has got those three wickets but still gave away those 31 runs. Couple of wickets for Azaz. Going for 20 runs, Ayu Shukla gone for plenty of runs, 42 in his four overs, a wicket to his name and they managed 202 for the loss of eight. And when they came out for the chase, they were straight away in deep, deep trouble, losing Muthuza in the first over. Then the partnership between Nizakat and Anshuman got better of the bowlers of Saudi Arabia. Nizakat got 73, but he lost the partners from the other end. Anshuman Rath managing 29, Zishan Ali 18 and the bowlers doing a pretty good job. Zainul Abidin, he was brilliant, the left arm orthodox, getting three wickets in his kitty, going for just 16 runs. Hisham Sheikh, the captain, managed a couple of wickets and Ishtia Khayma, the wicket to his name. The end, Saudi Arabia winning the match by 55 runs. A brilliant performance we have a witness from the men in green and let's head down to the presentation and let's see who is the player of the match from this game. Is Hamim Khan okay or, or what? Hamim Talwar. Talwar. So what? Yeah, Cricket cr cr Falls are wrong. Cricket Falls are wrong. Cricket Falls are wrong. Cricket wrong. I will not. Okay, here's the big question, you have to be it's honest to me. Yeah, yeah. Is your birthday right on Cricket Falls? Yeah, yeah, What's the date that I'll tell you? Bardalia. You, you promised me. Bardalia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 29. No, no, that's not 25. I saw 29 and I said, hold on. Yeah, five years. Five years. Okay, give me your, give me your, hold on. Where's my pen? You got a pen? You got a pen? So, how many Talawar? 34 years. Not 34 years. T-A-L-W-A-R. Talawar. Yes. Can I go, how many Talawar? No, no, just me. Oh, that's gone. Mm -hmm. You need to have a word of these lads. Yeah. 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 I don't know my name from Fair Prime. Uh, I haven't changed it. Well, I'll change it. When I get back, I will change it. From the NCD or MCC, I'm not sure who it is. I will call you in there. Okay, don't come up before that. Come in this side. Okay, we're all set. Music Cat, you'll be first. Uh, Hisham, you'll be second. And what might be you? Don't want to give the surprise away, okay? It could be you. Alright, give us a count, then. let's get this going. What of us? You need to put the edge Then call you. Yeah, I will call you. I will call you. So keep it nice and clean, if you don't mind, boss. You're very organised all of a sudden. It wasn't like this on day one. Okay, give us a count whenever we're ready. Stand by.
OK, post-match presentation time, game number 10, and we've seen an absolute cracker in the ACC Men's Premier Cup. The first big upset of the tournament, Saudi Arabia, maybe the biggest result in their cricketing history. They have dusted off Hong Kong in a big way, beating them by 55 runs after posting a really impressive 202 for eight on the board. Before we get into the player of the match and the two captains, we'll just start with a few thanks to all of our partners who've made this tournament possible. The official streaming partner from India, that's Fancode. The official broadcast partner back in Nepal, that's Kantapur TV. Our official sponsors, our partners of Daffa News, 1X Bats and Babu 88 Sports. And of course, our commercial partner, the team at TCM from Delhi in India. Our thanks to all of them for helping to make this tournament possible. I'd like to speak to both captains. We'll start with the captain of Hong Kong, that's Nizakat Khan. Nizakat, commiserations, hard luck today. Can you just run me through that match? Where did it go wrong? A heavy defeat. Yeah, obviously, especially, you know, our bowling, we have leaked too many runs, to be honest. Uh, we have bowled to in their arc, so, you know, credit goes to them. They played superbly well. Their batting was phenomenal, I think, today. Yeah, they did bat really well, but the fielding as well, two big run-out chances. I think it was in the first six overs. What quite went wrong there? A bit of miscommunication in the field? Yes, you know, uh, you know, in this heat of the game, you know, it happens. So, you know, it's T20 cricket. This is all. Of, this is the fun about this game. But yeah, you know, to be honest, overall, they have outplayed us today. What about the batting? You, you needed 203 to win. Never going to be easy, even though it's a very good batting track. What was the talk at the halfway stage as you approached that chase? Well, you know, we, you know, we have trust that you know we have a very good batting lineup as well. Uh, so we could have chased that. But the thing is that you know the wickets, you know, Anshuman and Babar and Ezaz in that period that I think caused us, that sums up the game. Yeah. You must have been pretty frustrated. You came and I think you saw eight of your, your teammates go at the far end. You cut a very frustrated figure at the non-strikers end. Yeah, so, you know, I was, uh, you know, I was trying to, uh, obviously, you know, I was trying to take this game as deep as possible. You know, you never know in these tournaments, you know, run red coming to play. But, you know, good teams never rely on run red. But, yeah, you know, we have uh, another two games left. We are not out of this tournament. We are still confident to, uh, to qualify for semis. You batted really well yourself, 73 with the bat. Where do you think this leaves the group? Do you think you have to win your last two? If you're only in one of them, it will be down to that net run rate. Yeah, you know, you know, we are not going to look for run rate. We have to win those last two games. It's very, very important. And then, you know, uh, if we win those, then it will be a very easy. We are going to be through for semis. Okay, thanks for all your honesty. Hard luck today. Thank you. OK, Nizaka Khan, understandably very disappointed. A heavy 55-run defeat. Time to speak to the captain of Saudi Arabia. That's Hisham Sheikh. Become Hisham. Well, what a performance. Is that the biggest win in the history of Saudi Arabian cricket? Uh, maybe, but uh, we are looking for something more, inshallah, in this tournament. But the boys put up the uh, fight, I think, today, after the sad loss yesterday. And as I mentioned yesterday as well, that Saudi has a lot to offer, and uh, we've shown it today. You've always been a very strong bowling and fielding side. I've covered many of your games now, but sometimes the batting has been a little bit heavily reliant upon a couple of the boys at the top. Today there was great contributions throughout. 200 plus just for the second time in your history. You always felt that was a winning total? Yeah, I think uh, anything above 180 to 190 was a very good score. I had mentioned in the toss as well. And we've been working a lot uh, in, during Ramadan and uh, one month pass on our battings and developing some extraordinary like uh, unorthodox shots like the scoop or the reverse. Which, which is, I think, the uh, say of nowadays uh, T20 cricket. So I think we've seen some today very good shots from our boys in the end. And uh, that's what I think has paid off the practices. Can you give us a sense of, of how big a challenge it is? There's lots of cricket in Saudi Arabia, but you don't have a lot of facilities. I, I think, really, your turf pitch is very few. Most of your cricket is on concrete wickets and then matting over the top. So to come here and play on grass wickets, that's a big part of the challenge for you. Yeah, it's a part of the challenge and we know the challenge, so we are trying to replicate uh, what we uh, face here uh, by maybe uh, getting some amount of grasses and practicing it there or artificial turfs. So last one month we have been practicing a lot, uh, considering what challenges we might be able to face with these quality sites. And uh, yeah, I think uh, now, the, uh, now it's showing slowly. I want to ask you about two of your top batters. Abdul Wahid, 77, I thought he batted beautifully. And then Faisal Khan, with that 30, he's become the first Saudi Arabian batter to 1,000 T20i runs. Two outstanding players. Yeah, both of them are brothers coming from the same home, so you expect that from them. <laughs> and uh, they're very heavily uh, talented guys. I think they're doing very good in the domestic structure as well. And uh, I think uh, they just played their game today. Okay, final question. The bowlers, they were brilliant and certainly I thought you put yourselves around the field really well too. Who were the standouts with the ball for you? 
Yeah, I think everyone did their job. Uh, defending 200 against a quality side like Hong Kong and restricting them to 147 and a ground on this sort of stature, I think they've done uh, everyone and I don't have any complaints as such. You have two points in the bag, you have a big net run rate boost too, and you're very much in the picture for the semi-final qualification. Many congratulations. Thank you, thank you, sir. Okay, that is Hisham Sheikh, the captain of Saudi Arabia. Time for our Player of the Match award. I'd like to call upon our ACC match referee, Mr. Hamin Talwar, who's going to come up from the Afghanistan Cricket Board. Hamin, lovely to see you. Player of the match, a tight run thing today. Plenty of good performances. Special mentions for Zain al Abidain, three for 16 for him. Usman Najib with three for 33. And in defeat, Nizakat Khan was exceptional with 73 with the bat. But he made 77 off 51 balls, 10 fours and one maximum. The player of the match, it goes to Abdul Wahid. So Abdul's going to receive his award from Hamim Talwar. And a big smile for the cameras too. Thank you, gents. Abdul, come in here. Very well played. How happy are you right now? Thank you so much. Yeah, it's a special moment for uh, for us, for me, for my family, and for Saudi Arabia as well. Uh, like Hong Kong is quite a good team and, and a very experienced team, and uh, winning match for for my country is a bit uh, happiness, happy moment for me. I think this is the biggest win in your history. There's no doubt about that. You've beaten a side ranked ten places above you, but is there more to come from Saudi Arabia? This has been brewing, isn't it? Uh, to be honest, our plan is to uh, bring Saudi Arabia team to the next level, and uh, we have we, we are coming here with with a with a plan and well prepared. And since last, as uh, we have working, we have been working really hard in since last two months for this tournament. And inshallah, the result will be in the display soon. Tell me about your great friend, your relative Faisal Khan. A thousand T20I runs. You're out there with him today. Yeah, he's my younger brother as well, and he's a special player for us. And uh, whenever he's with me, like I'm feeling very comfortable because he's a slogging kind of uh, player. But I'm very feeling comfortable with him. <laughs> okay, final question: What are your ambitions for the rest of this tournament for the team? Are you very much looking at those semi-finals, or even thinking of maybe getting all the way to the final two, being one game away from a, a first ever Asia Cup? Yes, uh, definitely. The form, the players, uh, the combination, what we have, and. Uh, uh, especially my performance for the team. I'm trying my level best to do uh, to bring Saudi Arabia team to the next level, and we will do it, inshallah. Well, you batted brilliantly today. You're the player of the match. Well done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, that's going to wrap it up for the post match presentation. We'll wrap it up for our coverage here today as well. Don't go anywhere too far, though, because tomorrow we've got four games double header action, both in Oval 2 here, and back into action in Oval 1, including two massive clashes Nepal versus Hong Kong and Oman versus UAE. The four highest ranked sides in the competition will take each other on. It's going to wrap it up for me and all of the production team. Big thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.